Love is truly, truly walked through the door. <laughs> Boy, you're listening to the Yet Come On Show, or you're watching the Yet Come On Show. We hope you try to do both. Brought to you by Oxygen Financial, with two locations in the Atlanta metro, one in Buckhead for all you people that are downtowners, collars flipped up, driving the 3 Series BMWs and up. Or you can come outside the perimeter where we drive trucks up here in Milton and see Ted. Ted Jenkin is your man. Go to oxygenfinancial.net to get your finances in order. I'm Southside Steve, my co-host, Mr. Brett Barney. And the on-again, off-again, always a hot mess, always with something to say, we have Tyler Maynard. All right, right now, uh, before we get started, I will tell you that I've never felt more comfortable. It's like uh, working with my shadow, except I would think I would be this guy's shadow because he's a, a bigger force in the industry, a bigger force all the way around. We look alike, we sound alike a little bit, and I get told that if he had a little brother, it might be me. So I'm very excited about this guest coming up. But right now, before we get started, we have a little housekeeping to do, and we like to hear from our yet yeah, come oners. Yeah, uh, I'm and just going to say I've never felt more so like I'm going to get my ass kicked uh, during or after a show than uh, dude, I have today. Dudes with long hair will <laughs> kick your ass quicker than a dude with short hair. I just want you to know that. I'm just glad he's on the other side of the table. All right, uh, I'm just going to do one because this guy finally understood exactly what I've been asking for. So somebody said something negative because you hate it. it. All we've had is positive feedback, and finally we got a hater. Can't wait to hear it. It comes from Dan Murphy. This show should be renamed the Yes yeah, C-List Celebrity Show. Southside should get tanked every show, plus one of these sissies won't even participate in the Edward Forty Hands Challenge. This shit is an American. Plus, I think Southside hates Jesus. All right, that's horrible. Whoever wrote that is just trying to get at me. I'm not going to let. I'm talking it, about. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not going to let it affect me. Uh, I'm putting away the water. I'm going to drink some liquor and not and pretend I never even heard that crap. Uh, <laughs> I I'll, think it's kind of funny. I, it is a little funny. It's a good come oner. It's a good come oner. I don't like the negative crap. I, I I hate a holes. I don't care what color you are or who you worship. Or some people I think are out of bounds on their worship, but. I will say that I hate a-holes, and that was an a-hole statement. Okay, and the other thing, like I said, finally somebody gets it. Just rate, comment, review, do whatever you want to the show. Post a comment if it's Apple Podcast, if it's YouTube, if you tweet it to us. I will definitely try and read it on the show. And don't forget, you can tweet in whatever you want at the Yeah Come On Show or follow us on Instagram at the Yeah Come On Show. That's all you got to do, and uh, unlike Brett, I'm not negative. Uh, speaking of— I love the negative. I, I thrive it. on it. I'm going to pour a little bit of something on top of this, although I can drink it straight. What I'm drinking right now is the original Jesse James American Outlaw Bourbon Whiskey. And uh, who better to have in the studio than <laughs> Jesse James Dupree? <laughs> yeah, come <laughs> on. Yeah, come on. Let me, get, yeah. let me do a little bit for him. Yeah. 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 There you go. I appreciate you uh, opening the bottle up to start the interview off right. Yeah, this is the way you do it, son. And this is American. And I do like Jesus. Actually, I'm Catholic. We talk more about God, but I do like him. We put a bunch of Jesus in that bottle. There's, is Jesus There's, in Je here? Jesus is in everything we do. Hmm. Maybe eventually <laughs> I'll actually, find out. No, I actually heard Jesse stands over the big vat of bourbon yeah. and blesses it. I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't want to get off of not being sacrilegious or nothing. I've just said, no. we, you know, for people to claim that you don't love Jesus is, is it wrong because I, I, I know I know what kind of a family man you are and how you raise your kids and that Thank kind you. of thing so 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 that's that's just wrong, I was wrong, church wrong, wrong on all of us and as far as the bottle of bourbon uh, <laughs> may not have put some Jesus in there but we did put the equivalent of five Viagras which which <laughs> Thank you. Which, which will make her see Jesus so yes. so, so <laughs> in, inadvertently we did put a little Jesus in every bottle because yes. she's, she's gonna be going oh Jesus Jesus yeah. do you know do you, do you know my wife came to me with her little uh, uh, calendar or whatever it's in her phone and and we're looking to make a baby this weekend. Well, there, you know what you got to do for that. If you need any help, let me know. I might. Yeah. Like, so you give, give you some tag up. Give you some instructions. Oh, tag up no, or I'd instructions. Just, I just sit in the corner <laughs> with a video camera and make some money on a videotape after the fact. That I'm would like, kill on our YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, it would. I'm like, honey, I've seen Jesse's kids. Rick, Rick Patreon. Rick, Rick, Rickman's instructional menu for having a baby. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's, that's what you get for fucking around. That's it. <laughs> I heard you just you just put it in and hope for the best. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I heard of the rest. First off, you're supposed to go in and you go out, go in, go out, have some fun, and then yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, congratulations on on your opportunity opportunity to try yeah wasn't it weird i mean did uh, i don't know about you know your son was it was he an accident or did you do it on purpose nigel was not planned 
Okay. And uh, keep going. No, no well, neither neither was uh, nice way to say ne- accident. Ne- neither was Thea, but uh, Thea, no. But I, you know, and 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 to be honest with you, is, is damn tall and good looking as Nigel turned out. I question who his daddy might be. So, nah. you know, because he's a good looking little fella. Well, and, you married two hot women, uh, yeah. but boy, you you met your soul hate, soulmate on the second one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, both both uh, both both the, the moms were great moms, and uh, Nigel is uh, Nigel's turned. Out. I'm so proud of him. I have so many people that, across the country. That uh, that make I mean a lot that that say man I met your son and, and you know he's such a respectful guy and just I mean oh, he, is. he turned out to be a fine man and he's uh, a gentleman you know and and it, it, it it's one of those things that uh you know not to get political or not you know but do it, but timely wise when you look at all the crazy stuff going on in the world and you figure that you know my arrest sheet and and my my history as far as the band stuff with all the publicity stuff we did that resulted in me having a, 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 a an arrest record yeah you, uh, you you've know, been in jail and, and the, the things that I've done. At the end of the day, I've still been able to raise some responsible kids. How about you that? know, and uh, and and uh, it, it just drawing that line from the entertainment side of things for when you go home, just like you do, and yeah. and and you focus on on doing the right thing and, and raising your kids. And and I, I'm very proud of, of the kids that I've raised. And Nigel's a great example of a uh, you know of how a, a fella can turn out to be a fine young man if you just uh, communicate. That's all you got to do. You got to you got to talk. How old's Theo now? Well, that's uh, that's what crazy drives me absolute crazy. All the energy. And all the focus on, say, a gun control or any of the issues, yeah. any, a, a racism or whatever the case may be, all these, all these issues that come up, and all the energy and all the money and all the political sides that are taken about it, and it's all. I feel so dumb for hearing any of it because at the end of the day, if you raise responsible citizens, none of those become issues. No, you know, none of, I mean, you could put a grenade in my kid's hand. And you're going to be safe because he's 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 I've raised him to be a responsible kid, and I mean he ain't going to take a gun or a grenade or whatever and do anything stupid because he's a good, he's a great guy. Yeah. And, and but it it comes from raising kids. I wish half the focus on just gun control alone or abortion or whatever. I wish I wish all of or at least half of all that energy could go toward just how are we going to raise these kids, especially the ones that are in the inner cities that are. No, but I, I get off on it. But I, because I'm proud of my kids, and I, and, I, and I, but not just because of what they are, but because of the example that us rockers can set that you can ra- ra- raise responsibility. Oh citizens. yeah, you're on the road. Uh, you know, you got hair at certain times halfway down to your ass. You know, and uh, you're riding a Harley. <laughs> yep. You're shooting guns. Chainsaw is actually a musical instrument yep, to yep. you. Uh, and uh, you know, and I see the people you're around up in Sturgis and doing stuff. And uh, you and I attract a similar uh, crowd. You know, there's blue collar. Collar, no collar and white collar yeah. we get a lot of that that on the lower end you know which are just good working hard ass people but they got an edge to them man but they they tend to do things right you know when yeah. it comes to their kids and stuff mama would whip you otherwise exactly <laughs> exactly you know and uh you know it's just one of those things that i'm proud of what you've done and you know well, and you. i'm trying to do it with my son being two years old we just went to uh preschool i had to go and uh, take a two-hour class on how preschool works and and how the security aspect works because of the world we live in. And I was like, good God, man, this parenting stuff, man, it's a trip. I've I've, I've shared some wisdom with, with people often and it's a crazy thing. Hindsight being twenty twenty, it, it, you know, it, it just makes all the sense in the world, but where you are right now, just tell you, if you feed them, they will grow. That's it. <laughs> you feed my yeah, brother and, said, and, and in the blink, yeah. in, the, in the blink of an eye, they'll be graduating high school and, yeah. and, and, and then college. Yeah, Thanks. My brother, the PSA he gave me was, uh, "Don't drop them if you can. If you can help <laughs> if it, if you can help it, yeah. That's but what they're told tough. Me. You know what? Kids are tough. I mean, I won't lie to you. I've dropped mine. <laughs> I dropped oh my god! Do, do they know the yeah. wives? Yeah. You're like, uh, yeah. 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 Sorry about <laughs> do that. the kids know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's scars. Scars. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it happens. Though. I will tell you, we did a joke years ago, and Jesse knows about this. And again, Jesse James Dupree, for those of you that don't know, he is the lead singer of the rock band Jackal. At least that's where it all started. Right, yeah. We will talk about where it's ended because we are holding, there's two bottles on this table that he is responsible for. So he is in liquor stores in and around town. If you want to grab yourself a little piece of America, because it is America's outlaw bourbon whiskey, Jesse James, uh, you are quite the businessman, but I wanted to let you know 
that years ago on the regular guys, Rock 100.5, we did a thing where we were doing the Final Four. So we did a graph, uh, a draft thing where I had to put every friend I had, personal friends, family, celebrities, rock stars, and I did it all, and I had to pin them against each other every week, and I whittled it down to this guy and Brian Fennerin. Rocker went, everybody went, anybody you would have thought I was tied to. And I put a lot of thought into it, and I was like, you know, and I told my wife, I said, I don't know a better person than Jesse James Dupree. Well, thank you for saying we, 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 You and I grew up in this business together. Yeah, but I mean, you, we, we you always keep your word. You got the craziest ass sketch. Trust me, while this man has been here, uh, he has been on the cell phone. He's he's ca- talking to Harley. He's talking to Hog Nation. He's talking to Dam. <laughs> I don't I don't know I, I don't know who all he's talking to, but I've heard some of the phone calls. And you have a schedule where you don't quit, and you will put things aside for friends. And uh, you you always show you. Matter of fact, that's why you're the only like celebrity I'll say that I invited to my wedding. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, and, and what a great event that was. Oh, you know what he does? He yeah. calls me. And goes. I got. I, I've never erased the message. I should play it. I may do it for the <laughs> podcast over. Hey, look. All right, I'm gonna come to your goddamn thing or whatever you said. And you're like, but you gotta know. I don't own a pair of blue jeans. All right. Yeah, yeah, I don't own a suit. A suit. Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah, what? Yeah, no. Yeah, Did yeah. I say blue jeans? Yeah, Damn yeah. it. I don't. Wear, I don't own a suit. <laughs> I was yeah. like, he's wearing jeans. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I don't, all wear, right. I don't wear. I don't wear a suit. No, he told me. He goes, I don't own a suit. He goes, I don't own a suit. So I hope you're okay. You did, get, you did get me in a nice jacket, though. I did put a nice jacket on for you. Jacket and blue jeans, and yeah. I loved it. And I kept yeah. seeing him out in the audience. So I'm like, you got to get up here and do a toast. For me. <laughs> so I dragged him up here. So we did a toast of uh, Jesse James. And uh, it, it, it was great. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it. And uh, having you on this show is huge for me um, because of what, what you've done for me. And we've been looking for a liquor sponsor. I just got to tell you. Well, you got it in your hand right there. I know, because you know what we've been drinking. What, what all? I know exactly what we've been drinking. All right. Well, you've you've been doing Tito's, which is well. Like, I did that for a little bit, and now I've been doing like the truly the white claws. I do some beer. They, they got that. that that's I mix a, it up. See, I'm, being in the spirits world with having the Jesse James bourbon, um, you know, I'm a fan of any of these companies that come up with great ways to market their stuff. You know, and Tito's, you know, the 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 thing that he did with it was so great because he'd been around for quite a while, mm-hmm. but he really he really took a play on the uh, um, gluten free. Oh, and he he just he slapped gluten free because that was a craze that was going on, and he slaps gluten free vodka, <laughs> and, and the next thing you know, it's everywhere. I mean, and, and, I mean, yeah, and uh, just it's a I mean, diet liquor. I, I love I love genius things like that, and uh, and I study it, and and you know, and people people get so. Uh, defensive and proprietary over what what brown liquors they drink, and you know, and and you know, I, I grew up, uh, you know, I used to listen. To, I, I'd wear my Leonard Skinner shirt or my Jack Daniels T shirt, and if you didn't like either one, I'd fist fight you. you know, right? You know, because I mean, because it, it represents uh, Jack who, Daniels special. Yeah, yeah, and it, it represented you know a blue collar and stuff. But over the years. I've watched that brand is it, it's it, it's obviously to be so respected because it's it, it's one of the big ones and but but they've become everything to everybody now. I mean they're a white tablecloth drink, they're an urban drink, they're a you know they're they're everything to everybody. And I just wanted to come out with a bourbon that belongs again to blue collar people that bust their knuckles 40, 50 hours a week or more. It's it, it's it's half the price of Jack Daniels for the, for the most part in the much less than Jack Daniels because I didn't want people to have to take a second mortgage out to buy a bottle of my bourbon and it, because at the end of the day it's just it's brown whiskey but it's really good stuff and uh, we do have a single barrel uh, it's a blue label single barrel Tennessee whiskey that we only released about 1500 cases uh, this past year I've got one and, uh, of those bottles. Well, it, that that's for special yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's more top shelf stuff. But the, the the railroad track sets about fifteen foot from the barrel house. So five times a day, the trains come through and shake the barrels. So it's locomotive agitated, and and <laughs> and people ask me, well, they is that say, on the bottle? Well, people say, <laughs> it and, be. And, and people say, well, what does that taste like? Says, it tastes just like a damn Johnny Cash song. And uh, so so <laughs> God, but, so, and, uh, to, so total wine in uh, Alpharetta and the total wine on, in, on uh, Barrett Parkway in Kennesaw, they actually bought up uh, some of my single barrels. So if you if you grab a bottle of that blue label, you've got something that uh, we're going to be releasing some more of it. Because it's good stuff. Probably I've toward had the end it. of this year, but but that, that first batch was fifteen hundred cases, four year old, a uh, single barrel Tennessee whiskey. It's really great. And then of course the bourbon you've got in your hand, the original that we've put out, uh, over one hundred fifty thousand cases sold now, and uh, which, which is which is amazing. Thank you. And then in the honey bourbon, is the best honey bourbon on the market. And that's not just me bragging about it because I feel that way. We used to do these blind taste tests, uh, and 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 I, and I'll just go ahead and say it out loud. We cheated. 
when we created this honey bourbon, we cheated because all the other honey bourbons were out. And so I had the luxury of taste sampling against all the other brands that were out. Mm-hmm. And we, and we, uh, we, um, would grab people at the throttle fest that we were doing Myrtle Beach or Chicago or Kansas City or Sturgis even, and I'd grab a dozen people at a time and I'd take them back with all the other honey bourbons and we would blind taste test them. And I did not let up until we got our recipe. And and so in in a blind taste test, this will kick anybody's ass. It's the best honey bourbon on the market. And uh, again, Total Wine and uh, Sprayberry liquor stores. Uh, the Sprayberry bottle shops got it. A uh, Sherlock somewhere. I mean, all all the stores around the Atlanta area should have the the original. Has just, Greens jumped on it yet? That's a good question. I haven't been down to Greens, uh, and I, I need to ask that question specifically. All, most all the stores around outside the perimeter have us for sure. Um, you know, and then and then uh, the, the inside the perimeter should have it as well. well. It's worth it's worth the phone call take because I'm a bourbon drinker and I'm a Jack Daniels man. Always was. I mean, I've been drinking it since the tenth grade. And I, I, lo- I lo- yeah. the, again, I, I got off subject for myself talking about the the products, but I'll tell you that I love people get proprietary and defensive about their brown liquor, and I think it's great. When you come to my house, I've got. All kinds of brown, all different companies, because I, I love sampling the different ways that people make it. See, and, that's good. And and there's no, I mean, there's nothing. There, if somebody goes, well, I don't, you know, I drink this, and I drink, that's great. I mean, you know, Bullet or, or or Knob Creek or what? I mean, it's great I drink, stuff. I drink both the, of those. The, the, the thing yeah. that the thing that I love is that people develop a, a palate for it. And 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 the one message that I've been trying to share with people, because uh, there's so many people out there that they're not bourbon drinkers. I'm not a bourbon drinker. I'm not, and and I think that's largely due to the fact because they just don't have their mind prepared for what they're going to be tasting. It's because generally, if you can share with someone what you're about to taste and why you're going to be tasting what you're getting, you can start to enjoy it. So uh, the story of bourbon is is bourbon was initially uh, a mistake. An accident. It was an accident. It's like Coca Cola. It was an accident. It, it was an accident because they they had they were storing white liquor, which was basically moonshine, right. in the in corn liquor. They were storing corn liquor in in oak barrels. They had these virgin oak barrels that they were storing in, and there was a fire up in Bardstown, Kentucky. Uh, there was a fire that burnt, charred some of the barrels, and they went ahead and poured the juice after the fire was up. They went ahead and poured the the, the ju- oh, wow. juice into the barrels anyway. And, and shipped them out, and some of them on a boat or whatever. And 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 so when they unca- uh, untapped the the kegs, the the barrels, the the juice came out brown. The, you know that 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 caramel color. Awesome. And so what happens is is when you put the 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 corn liquor, and you put it in the the charred oak barrels, over the different climates and the different movements of the barrels, it makes the juice go in and out of not only the charcoal but it goes in and out of the wood through the different temperatures. So you're, the 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 juice is actually absorbing the sugars from the wood. So you're getting the natural Damn. the natural sugars from the wood. You're getting the charcoal, and then you're tasting that corn flavor. So if if you know when you drink some bourbon, you're going to taste a little bit of charcoal. You're going to taste that corn, and you're going to taste a little bit of sweetness sugar from the wood. If you know that, you can prepare yourself. What I tell people to do is get you some ice. And I'd start out with crushed ice if you're I never drank bourbon before because that's going to melt a little bit quicker. Get you some crushed ice, pour you some bourbon in there, and put you a little splash of water on top of that just to open it up, which they say to do that anyway. Mm-hmm. You open it up. Then cook you a bag of popcorn. Damn. And you sit there and you eat that popcorn and you sip on that and you're going to taste that charcoal, the sugars in the wood and that and, and that charcoal and, and the, uh, the the corn flavor. And, and by the end of the night, you'll just be adding – Bourbon to that ice, and you'll and, and the popcorn's gone, and you'll be a bourbon drinker. There you go. That's now the, you that, know. That's how you do it. I'm doing that to my wife actually tonight because she drinks the white liquor, and that's I'm a, like, you got to get on the bourbon with yeah, me. Just, it, just make it easier. Get, get your head right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will tell you that we've been drinking <laughs> on this show. Uh, Tall are you? Come on. So we've done like 17, 18 shows. Just come oners. Come oners, and uh, and we drink Woodford. We took it up. Okay. And I've been drinking it on the rocks, whereas I like my whiskey and my bourbon with a little bit of Coca-Cola. But uh, Woodford hasn't called. Well, I'll have to give you some single barrel. I'll give you some Jesse James single barrel. We'll see if we can't get you off the Woodford. Well, yeah, and I, all I'm saying is we're just looking for sponsors to okay. tell, tell your people <laughs> that the Yet Come On show will okay. go full on Jesse James, and we'll have it on the table every time. Uh-huh. And uh, tell them they can spare have, a couple I'll have bucks. My people, I have my people call you, call you your people. and Yeah, and to <laughs> Jesse's people, I'm looking at you. Jesse doesn't make the decision. be nice if you gave us a little bit of cash, like a couple hundred bucks, so we can buy more equipment. There you go. Hey, can I throw it back real quick? What? So you were 21 in the 10th grade? 
I don't know what you're talking about. What he said, oh, Jack Daniels. I drank that in the 10th grade. I did. I just wasn't surprised you were 21. Well, back then, grade. the drinking age was 18. It was. Thank you, So Jesse. he was 18 in the 10th grade. Still, no, that's pretty shitty. I drank illegally. I drank. <laughs> I was. It was an illegal drink. I wasn't allowed to. But that was the first thing. Actually, the first thing, and I'll ask you the same. First thing I ever got drunk on was wild turkey. Then I switched to Jack, and I never looked back. Well, the, the, the back when we were growing up, the drinking age was 18. It was, And yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal at 15 to go into a bar. I mean, uh, we would, we'd go down to Underground Atlanta, and which was a big deal if you figure that was, this was just right after, uh, right when 75 was being yeah. completed because but, uh, but prior to I-75, it was just uh, uh, Highway 41 right there that mm-hmm. went up and down. And we would go down, uh, my buddy Roger Sutton and I, we'd go down to Underground Atlanta on the weekends, and we'd pay somebody's way to go in to the clubs, the front page, Broadway, the Mad Hatter, and they would they would pay, we'd pay somebody's way to go in, and then they would come back out, and we'd lick our wrist and transfer the stamp. Back in and, the day. And then you had to transfer it back over because it would be inverted, you know. So that we, we'd do that, and then and then we'd wait till the crowd would go in, and we'd just keep our heads turned because we were 15 and looked 12, and we'd throw our hand up and show the mark and then going in and watch the bands play. That was and, my uh, problem. I yeah. look young. Yeah, well, hell, I did too. And, God, uh, but, I was a baby. But again, it was a different day and time, and uh, and and the bar scene was God, and, and the women was beautiful, and it just it was it was a, it was a good day to be eighteen. It was a damn good day. Atlanta's just it's a good place in the South, just yeah. as far as women are concerned. I will tell you that you've given me. I've got my Jesse James. You've got two different hats. You've got one that's kind of white, and then you got one that's a little creamier, uh, dark uh, on the neck. And I got the uh, I got the. Uh, the cock of the walk hats too. Yeah, the cock. Yeah, yeah. I've never gotten a uh, cock of the cock really? of the walk. Excuse yeah. me, but I love that. But I want to give you your uh, yeah, come on hat oh, right thank there. Thank you very much. I appreciate. I've been that. dying to give you one of those. All right, all right, all right. And uh, you know what? I went off and left this morning, and I was going to hang it up. I was going to wear it. Damn it! My wife's probably going, "Why is Steve's jackal jacket out?" But I have, <laughs> I have a jackal shirt because they used to put jackal on any gasoline shirt they could get their hands yeah. on. Yeah, work shirts. Yeah. Work shirts and uh, and then I've got the sweat jacket. You actually have like your own uh, fit fitness wear. It's got jackal. <laughs> it's a god dang sweat jacket and it's got a stripe up the side and it's got jack. I think it might actually say jackal me off for, on for it. the everything we've got says rock me roll me jackal me off on it. You you put rock me roll me jackal me off on it and it's sold. Is that not yeah. the greatest thing? Rock me roll me and jackal me <laughs> off. I mean, does it get any better? I don't know when that came to you, but I bet you're like, I got one. Oh, I can guess when it came to him. Well, I, maybe. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, the, that's not hard. The, maybe the, it there's was. Never, there's never been a show that we didn't open, and 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 I mean, like for tw- 27 years now. You know, there's, at the beginning of every show, we get to the first stop, and everything. I'll say, "Well, rock me, roll me," and the crowd goes, "Jack, roll me, me out. Out. and uh, it's just turned into our our little thing. But uh, yeah, it works. What do we have of uh, Jesse right now? Uh, I've got my favorite song set up, but I also have. You could either play that or uh, show because yeah, video, yeah, if you want the video that we're going to see here in a second. And, and we talked about this on uh, Bailey and Southside on Rock One Hundred Point Five. But we just had our own Rock Stock and Woodstock, and Jesse actually played Jackal played in '94. And I know you did some fancy talking to get yourself in there. You were with a huge lineup, but you ended up stealing the show in one hour, the things that happened on stage. So let's check out the uh, start of that for those of you that haven't seen it. This is Jesse coming out stage. And Jesse, you can, uh, God bless you. That's American right there. That's America. That's an epic top hat. Yeah. And I want to let you know that everybody in the band uh, straightens their hair. Is the, is the guitarist in his underwear? Uh, the drummer. Is. Drummer, I mean, I mean. Hello. Trust me, that caught my eye too. That's what heterosexual like. That coat weighed fifty pounds. Really? <laughs> yeah. The the our our light tech's wife made that jacket. There's little one inch square mirrors that she cut. Oh, yeah, it looks like a big disco ball almost. He is. He's a damn walking disco ball. Yeah. How many people were at Woodstock when you played? There's over half a million, I think. It was, it was us. It was just surreal. Uh, it was. It looked like the ocean. You know, when you look out the ocean and you just see that big body of water just kind of rolling, and, and that's exactly. I mean, look at it. I mean, God. yeah. At a Holy certain point, you just lose yeah. all concept. Of yeah, it. And, and really, that camera doesn't capture the enormity of it. I mean, it, uh, there in person, it was just. It just went, the, the crowd just went on forever and ever. Biggest crowd you ever been in front of? That, I believe that was, yeah, for sure. Uh, the second biggest crowd was over in Amsterdam, uh, the, the uh, Dynamo Festival that they have over there. And, uh, and, the, and then the Rockin' Marines, uh, the, the Rockin' Marine shows that they do in Germany. 
But th- those were all eighty and a hundred thousand people. But that, damn! But that over a half a million there was was strong. I mean, wh- how many portalettes did they? Have? <laughs> I'm like, God, dang. you're not interested in the logistics of it. I, I wouldn't have. I would not take my wife into this because I'm like, she'd have to use the bathroom in ten minutes. I'm like, no, we're not going to the portalette. You just got to pee. You just go right it's there a on bottle, the spot. Yeah. That's a commitment going to something like that. It yeah. is. It, it is. If you a don't huge... have backstage passes, yeah. No, I mean, oh, that, to put yourself in that situation. Jeez, yeah, man. That chick's getting groped left and right. Well, I was just making sure she was alive for a second there. She did look kind of limp, yeah. Were you guys there for the entire festival, or did you only come and play your set and hang for a couple hours? We actually got to be there for a couple of days. Oh, uh, cool. Because we were out with Aerosmith at the time, and they played the next night. So we got there and, and, and played that day, and then and then uh, well, got to You had to the Mick Jagger walk going yeah. there for a second? Oh, he's got more than that. He's got the bunny hop. Yeah. He does do the bunny hop. Uh, matter of fact, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, during this, uh, during this basically one hour on stage, Jesse has a – you have a 12-gauge shotgun microphone stand? A 12-gauge mic, uh, microphone stand. It shoots goose blanks, gun. right? It's a goose gun. Goose gun. Well, it can shoot whatever you put – well, what whatever, <laughs> whatever what you put you, in it. What did you – I mean, were, was it raining down pellets? Or well, what it depends on in? if it's an outdoor show or not, right? So <laughs> we actually have – we, we do have a, couple, we have a couple of different kind of shells that we can put it depending on the venue that we're playing. So what did you put in that one? Uh, whatever the road crew pop. I mean, I, I, I don't – people ask me what, you know, what, what, what mixture I use in my chainsaw, and I say, talk to my tech. Yeah, I, 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 things I, you don't have to worry I about. I don't mess with that chainsaw as far as the, the – all I know is when they hand it to me, there's so much better crank on the first pull. Yeah. because You better warm it <laughs> other, up. Otherwise, I'm going to be throwing the son of a don't, bitch. Yeah. Don't. yeah. Uh, so you're you're out there, and uh, you're firing off your uh, your shotgun microphone stand, and you're doing it in honor of yeah, past Yeah, I, I fired falling. off a round for Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix, and you know, just for each one of the people that had, had passed away that played the original Woodstock. And, uh, and I rattled them off, and I was firing a round off – you know, in honor of each one of them. And I was doing it pretty rapidly and I did, I was doing it so bad. I, I actually shoved my, I, I was, I was chambering it with my right hand and I, I, I chambered my thumb into the Damn. And, and cut my hand. And I, I didn't really think too much of it, but I had, uh, during the show, you know, hot and sweaty and wearing that heavy ass jacket, I was flipping my hair out of my face and, and I, I get over to the side of the stage and I'm jamming, you know, totally in the moment. And my brother, who was the road manager, he grabbed me, you know, and jerked me back behind the amps. And I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Dude, we're playing one and, and he, he goes, "You're bleeding." He goes, "You're bleeding." And he kept, he was, he was digging through my hair, uh, through my face, my hair out of my face to see where I was bleeding. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm bleeding. I'm going, oh, you know, and I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm bleeding because I. And then I look down at my hand. Here's oh, my hand. And then, and, oh. then, and as soon as he noticed it, it wasn't my face bleeding. So he threw me back out onto the stage, and we picked back up. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but see, I, that was one of the things that happened, and then, uh, and then the road crew, uh, the road crew had taken, and they it, the stool that I was using to play the lumberjack song had a foam top on it with a black fake leather, you know, the vinyl uh, yeah. wrap on the top of it, seat cover, and they had opened up a little slit and filled it full of gas. And you knew that, right? <laughs> they you knew there was it, gas. They on had it? filled it full of gas. Oh. Well, I told them that I was going to set the stool on fire. So what, normally, what I'll do, and I do, I do it often. There's, you can look on my Facebook or my Jesse James Dupree Instagram, and there's photographs of me. I'll take, open up a little bit of the gas tank, pour a little bit of gas on the stool, set it on fire, and and, and you know, cut it up from there and such. They went ahead and went one step further, and they filled. Damn. And uh, so when when That's I was a damn bomb. So when I hit it, the exhaust it doesn't have a muffler on. The chainsaw. That's that's why the damn thing's as loud as it is on, on stage with the amps and stuff. So when I hit the stool, and there's actually an Entertainment Weekly magazine that had a great photograph on the cover See from, from that year. That, yeah. From that year, and I was com- pretty much engulfed in flames because when the chainsaw went down to the stool and the ex- and it and and it, it opened it up with all the gas, the exhaust from the chainsaw ignited straight onto the the stool and it burst damn. into flames and it just created a big fireball. And it singed some of my hair, but it, luckily I wasn't hurt. But um, it, but it, yeah, it, it was a it was a moment where I was <laughs> it, I felt the heat and um, crowd loved it. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, yeah. And David Letterman was playing playing clips from the Jackal Show and the news. Uh, CNN was running the radio. All is not peaceful. Peaceful at Woodstock today, and they were showing you know the 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 blood on my face and the and the the shotgun going off and the <laughs> me being engulfed in flames. And then the, and then they were showing me butt naked because I stripped down butt naked. Get, Gibson uh, guitars had a little compound up in the the back dress uh, with a uh, 
the backstage area was and all the artists were hanging around jamming and such. And I, I coerced the Gibson guys into letting me take a, Gip, a brand new Gibson SG and, and gave it to my tech and said, I said, I'm going to play it on She Loves My Cock. And, uh, and so during She Loves My Cock, I went out on stage, I'm playing the chainsaw, I mean, playing the guitar, the SG, and I dropped my pants down to my ankles and, and I was jumping around naked basically because I didn't want to miss the chance. They had a 40 foot square screen up on the PA stacks and, and I didn't want to miss the chance for my penis to be 10 foot long. That was the, the only chance. Did that you I, take a couple that was, looks? That was the only, yeah, chan- that that was the only chance I truly had a, a, an opportunity to enlarge my penis. And, uh, good and, and Yeah. And so, uh, so <laughs> I did that and I busted the guitar into pieces, threw it into the crowd. And then I jumped in afterwards as well. And, um, and so, um, it was uh it, it was a, a lot of there's a the lot stool. Of, yeah, that's yeah, it. look yeah, at that. Yeah. yeah. That that, one, that one from Woodstock, but that I mean that's whenever I, sometimes when I set it on fire, but um there is a, a photograph from Entertainment Weekly that that uh that was that ran I'm looking from for Woodstock, that one. from Woodstock 94. I'll, I'll keep but, it posted. But um anyway, um so they all those clips together made it look like Jackal had opened up all kinds of hell at Woodstock. I mean, and, you made an impression. Uh, yeah, we, that was uh, your that was your chance, though, right? Yeah, I mean, we. Uh, I mean, we we turned it into jackal stock there for a minute, but there was a lot of great performances. I mean, uh, Green Day had a notable performance. The mud uh, throw. The, the, uh, uh, the nine, oh, inch, yeah. nine inch nails yeah. guys did a, a great job. I mean, I I, I I like to think that we helped start that go start that set that bar because mm-hmm. I mean we we did some outrageous stuff and then other bands followed thinking uh, they had to have been thinking what can they do to you know to do something crazy too so uh, whether it was because of that or just uh, alongside it it was great to be part of it tell me this much and I've got my father-in-law has a huge problem with me because of a gift you gave I wonder him. why <laughs> Oh, I'm very curious about this. <laughs> How long is that list? Now you can yeah. just leave it there. My father-in-law has a huge problem with me. That's pretty, there's really no there's no other specifics to give. No. That's just in general. No, and, and, and and what else? And why wouldn't he? And why wouldn't he? Yeah, okay. dude, I, I actually. Peed. God damn! Can you imagine, Look, Dad? You're, you're so I, Dad, Dad, I'm marrying Southside Steve. Oh yeah. <laughs> the mother was like, who? What's his name? When he's, she said he's probably she got scars on his eyeballs from sticking forks in it. <laughs> yeah, dude. He, he, I, I just want to say I'm sorry. I've met him. Yeah, he's a normal. I've met him. He's a VP at like Ocean, or Ocean Pacific. He's, he's at I don't know what's wrong with me today. He's at uh, wasted. Well, no, what you're not wasted. Not wasted Hammered. yet. No, he's at uh, what? What is the uh, the Pacific uh, company downtown? Who am I thinking of? Georgia, Georgia. Pacific. Yeah. Oh, he's a Georgia GP, Pacific. GP. Yeah. He's, he's, a a G- very for, he's a very forgiving man. Yeah, he's a VP at a GP. He has to be. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, so he sits there and he went in, you know, when I moved and I had to live with the guy for 13 months before we found our house with, with my newborn baby. Well, there you oh, go. That's a sitcom uh, right there. <laughs> dude, you have no idea. So uh, he's looking at my chainsaw. Jesse gave me a chainsaw and he's got it autographed. And he's like, well, we got, oh, wow, you got a chainsaw. Uh, you know, we got some branches. Let's just go ahead and get this thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not firing it up. And it happened again the other day. He literally offered it up to my uh, brother-in-law. Yeah, well, Steve's got, I'm like, that's my Jesse James Dupree chainsaw. We I've, do I've, not operate that. I've got a similar story. Do you? Because I've, do you agree that, I just want you to know, am I okay not to use that? Well, because I, you well, signed it. It's well, a great piece. Well, let me share with you my story. All right. My story is... The second Jackal album came out uh, in 94, Mm -hmm. and I received a big box uh, at the house. And uh, and I thought, what? I wasn't expecting anything. What the hell is this? So I opened it up, and it was a chainsaw. Mm. And and there was a card in there from Steven Tyler. Damn, that still got yeah. You you may have you may have even looked at it. It's yeah. on it's on the mantle at the house. At the then I have seen it. Yeah. I know where the mantle. And, and it at. was a card of, of the cartoon characters on the front of it of of uh, Aerosmith when they were on the Simpsons. Okay, and that's on the front cover of the card. And you open it up, and it's from Stephen, handwritten. It says, "Your new album is the Balls. Here's a different chainsaw. Here's a chainsaw in a different key because diversification is the root of all evil." And I thought, what? Well, that's a great thing. You know, he said, here's a chainsaw in a different, different key, key because diversification is the root of all evil. So I took this chainsaw that Tyler gave. I put the card up on, on my trophy room yes. mantle, and I put the chainsaw away. I come home six months later, and a tornado had come through Georgia. Yeah. And this was, I was living in the first house that I'd ever been able to buy, and it was in a neighborhood. And 
You're you're not set for a neighborhood. And, son. and I'm not, I'm not no. geared for a neighborhood. But not it was in all. a neighborhood, and and it knocked a couple two trees down in my nice sized pine trees in the yard. And I come in off the road, and I think I'm I'm just going to clear this up myself. I don't need to call a company to do it. I can handle clearing my own yard. You know, because I'm a man. I'm ready. To, yeah, I'm I'm ready to do I something. Got this. Because I poured concrete for a living. I mean, every day that I get away with doing what I do, I, I seriously have a hard time feeling like I've put a day's work in because I've worked real jobs. I've poured concrete. I've I've drove nails, toted lumber, whatever it takes. Uh, drove trucks, and I'll do it all again if that's what it takes to feed my babies. But but I know what a good hard day's work is, and I feel guilty every day. I I, I get to do the things that I do between the liquor and the band and so on and so for and um so i came out and i'm and i'm thinking you know what i'm going to do this myself so i go into the garage and every single chainsaw carcass i'm picking up none of them work because they're all chainsaw pieces that i parts that i just beat all to hell <laughs> yeah so so the gas tanks are busted on them or the You're whatever like, why do i have yeah, these? the brakes won't work whatever the, the chainsaw brakes gone whatever the bars off of it so i'm looking around and I, here i am guy that plays the lumberjack song and i don't have a damn chainsaw that works in my house i just got parts of chainsaws that are just beat all to hell. And so um, I look up on the shelf, and there's that chainsaw that Tyler had given me. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> you do I'm, it. Don't you I'm do thinking, it. I'm thinking, okay, I got to have a chainsaw to, <laughs> to no. get this thing down. But I, I, get, I get it out, and I get outside, and I'm cutting up this tree. With with your and, Aerosmith and, chainsaw? And, and, my, and my neighbors are going by making smart-ass comments going, I recognize that song. <laughs> you know, and, you know, just you know, st- you know, just yuck, you know, yuck, yuck. running their mouth and stuff. You know, and um, and I and I stopped and I thought about it and I thought, you know, I've played all around the world, and I have people that would beat each other over the head to be able to grab a piece of the bar stool that we cut up and throw out into the crowd and such at the end of the show, and uh, they would probably actually pay money for it if, if we wanted to sell it. Oh, yeah. And when I need some damn help. They ain't a son of bitch. <laughs> I was out there cutting that big ass tree, and there wasn't nobody around to help no. me. Nobody was begging for a piece of it at all, and they just load that truck and get it out. You know, God. and you use that chainsaw though. Yeah, but I didn't hurt it. It's it's, it's uh, I still have it. So you think I could use yours and it wouldn't ruin it? If, man, if you need it, use it. I mean, damn it, <laughs> it's just so cool because people you come don't not afford a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> no, no. Like, I mean, they're not I, bad. I I actually have one of those. I can't another one here, I, I, but I actually. I, I, have a chainsaw. Well, I'll tell you though, the chainsaw. The, you the can one, use mine. The ones that I use, the farm boss that I use, is them things eight hundred dollars. No, yeah, he's got a high. I end. mean, the, the, those those things that I use on stage are eight hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah I actually uh, somewhere in my Instagram feed, you can go back and look. I, I took some photographs and. Um, we were cleaning out. We have this big warehouse now because over the years it got way, way too much for my garage. And, and now we have a, an entire warehouse that's props and, and, and equipment and bar stools and, and, waiting and to be memorabilia, cut. just in everything, <laughs> everything from the, over the years that we've, you know, had out on tour and stuff, oh, yeah. di- diff- different parts of our career, my life in a, in a storage barn, basically. And, um, and I've got, there's a photograph I posted on Instagram of, of all these chainsaw carcasses. That were still piled up in the in the storage warehouse, yeah. and and I posted, it and everybody was like, uh, yeah, "I'll pay for it. Send me one of those. Send me." One. So I, I've still got them, and uh, what we're going to do is is I'm going to find the right time, and uh, I th- I've been working with, and I'm actually I may do it this coming Christmas or something. Um, I'm working with the VFW now. Uh, the, and the VFW, a lot of people think the VFW is just some old guys in a lodge somewhere drinking bourbon, right? Mm-hmm. But the VFW is more viable now than they ever have been. All of our men and women over the current conflict that have been coming home, they need someone to help them you know, understand their benefits and their rights and, and that kind of thing. VFW, for 120 years, they're celebrating now. VFW, wow. they not only help our men and women in uniform when they get reacclimated and come back home, they do it for free. And and that's a big in de- in this day and time with all the bureaucracy and such. It's a big service that they provide, and um, and, and I've gotten to be good friends with Doc, who's the commander, the the the, the chief of uh, the commander in chief of the VFW, and Hal, who's who's the next in line for that, and Kevin, and all these guys. I mean, there's great guys at the VFW, and so I'm um, helping to bring awareness that the VFW needs people to support it more than ever. And on top of that, they have a program called Unmet Needs, where they're given like up to a fifteen hundred dollar grant to soldiers that find themselves in a little bit of financial hardship from being deployed and such. Oh, yeah. and, and the cool thing about it is they'll give the grant within 20 days if the soldiers qualify for it. And and and, and it's, it's and they scrutinize it, you know, accordingly and and if they deserve it they'll give them the $1500 grant. And so you can donate to the unmet needs program. You just uh, uh, text 20222 you just text 20222 and you text the word needs n e e d s that's all you got to do it, it, 
N E E D S and to two oh two 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 and and like through your phone you can make like a five dollar donation that'll make a huge difference. So I'm proud to be working with those guys. But I'm thinking about uh, between now and the end of the year, I'll pull those chainsaw carcasses out. Why not? Put them up online and and and, and auction them off. There they are. Look at there, there's a look bunch of them there. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, and then whoever gets them will put you know donate the money to the. Uh, to the VFW. All right, that red Damn, one. that's a lot of... Uh, yeah, that is yeah. a lot. Uh, There's more than that. Yeah. God, look at it. And they all got the logo on there, too. Yeah. Damn, you got steel. Man, those are nice-ass chainsaws. Yeah, there's the Johnson Reds Reds and steels. Reds. Just all the ones I've used over the years. The original brands that I used look at that, to Jesse. Out there doing it. Do you still, uh, you still reside in the Atlanta area? You still at Kennesaw? I'm up right at the base of Kennesaw Mountain. Yep. And, uh, you know, just it uh, used to be the country. Mm-hmm. It did. <laughs> used to be the country. It used did. to be the country, and uh, you know, I get up until the bur- bubble burst, you know, in '08, you know, there was 350 thousand people a year moving into the state of Georgia. Unbelievable, and, man! Uh, and it was just getting so so uh, uh, congested, and then it leveled off for a while, and that's back growing again. I but know. I just can't see myself living anywhere else. I'm, you know, I've gotten pressure over the years from television networks and, and record companies and different people I've worked with. You just need to live out here. You know, it just makes it easier you know, you know, for me having to fly in and, and get hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff. And, and I've, I've toyed with it a few times, but I, I don't know after about, I don't know if you spent much time on in the West coast in California, I have. but, but after about the, if I can make it a good week and a half, but going on the second week of being in LA, I start getting depressed. Because every day the sun's setting, every day you wake up three hours behind the East mm-hmm. Coast, every day, and it's just, there's just something about that whole mentality of those people out there that that are just you know a little more passive aggressive and just you know and and I wake up every day ready to take a huge bite out of life's ass. So after about the going into the second, <laughs> at the set, the, after, life has got a bite yeah, in yeah, its ass. Yeah, after that's the, a T-shirt. A, Hell yeah, it is. After, after the second week. I start getting depressed, and I'm ready to get back to. to I love the weather. I love the dryness. I hate the humidity here. Uh, that's always been a problem. I never had allergies till I got you know about 40 years old. So when I'm out west, I love that. And I, but you're right, man. It's it's like it's in a slower gear for sure. Uh, I do love the South. I can't imagine that's the only place I would live. I would probably live in San Diego if I could. I liked it out there, man. It, it, but they don't vote I, I don't, the same. I don't know when the last time you've been there. Or San not. Diego's pretty but, conservative. I, I, I think God. I don't know. For California, at least. I, I tell you, the last time I don't know the last time you've been there or not, but it is seriously out. What you're seeing on the news. We were there last year. What, we what went you're to seeing, Napa Valley. What you're seeing on yeah, but that's that's Napa Valley. Yes, yeah, Napa. What you're seeing on the news from San, San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, the homeless problem in such it is really out of control. Yeah, in Seattle it, in a too. Scary the whole way. West Coast. It's yeah. a scary, scary thing. I mean, I, I mean, I'm out there a lot, and it's a scary thing just because of the state of humanity out there and the fact that um the fact that it's not being addressed it's not being dealt with are in, they in, breaking and entering are they stealing are they are well they... i mean that's a, i'm sure that you've got that going on but i mean aside from that just the, again the humanitarian side of things and the fact that it's that it's it's growing at such mm-hmm. a fast pace it's very very scary uh, well, that, that 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 can be even because america is not a third world country and and i do not believe in handouts no. I, believe, I believe in hand ups yeah i'll help and, you and, and i believe i believe uh, i believe that there's a way to do it but but it's not going to be it's obviously the people that have been in control out there have been in control for decades and it's not getting fixed somebody's got to go in and do something because it's uh it, it's just sad because i love those cities uh, i mean i do love going to different call i mean whether it be chicago new york la uh, or salt lake city utah i mean i mm-hmm. love i love going and experience in different towns and there's a lot of there's very few towns cities there's very few cities anymore that have maintained their identity you know and georgia georgia's reinvented its identity because there's so many damn Yankees, <laughs> but but it just just becomes such a devol- God, devol- no. diverse culture down here. That's my, not, my I'm, I from, say all, I yeah. say all that jokingly. No, but, it's a joke, but, but, but damn. It, but Atlanta has reinvented it, its identity, and it, and I think it's still developing. I really do think it's developing, and there's been a lot of serious moves made, uh, like bringing the Brave Stadium up here to the north side, and a lot of things that have been going on. I mean, I think there's there's efforts made to to establish the same kind of identities that, say, an Indianapolis has. Indianapolis, uh, Cincinnati, uh, the, uh, uh, each have maintained their, their identity over all, you know, the 20, 30 years that I've been going there. You know? and, uh, but, and, but again, you go to uh, San Francisco or L.A. Or, 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 yeah. or, or San Diego, and it's, just, it, it's a serious problem. Yeah, I know. I was in uh, San Francisco. We had a, you know, but uh, yeah, I was there for like a day or two. Then we worked our way up to Napa. But... Boy, I enjoyed that. I was up there when the big fire started. Last Are you a year. wine drinker? 
Uh, I have become a little bit of a wine drinker. You have I, to be in Napa. I, well, well, I, I, you, I do, you, do, you do Napa for your wife. You do. Thank I did you. for my girlfriend. You no. do, yeah, you do Napa. For, no, yeah. he, he's right. I did Napa for my wife, but I'll tell you, I'm a dark liquor drinker, as you know, so I drink red wine. I'm not a white wine guy at all. We, uh, I, I was very fortunate in that uh, one of the big distributors in the country is Republic National, and their, their home office is out of Dallas, Texas, and one of the national wine executives made some phone calls it was my wife's birthday and she wanted to go to napa and she'd mm. always been she'd always been on me about taking her up there and so i was able to ask this guy to hook me up and he gave me the the red carpet treatment with oh. he he dialed me in with every single winery that we met with the head Person, wine maker, the, the, head, yeah, the, the, the head, the head of the Grape winery, and, and so we did. We, <laughs> so we had private, we had private tours from the, you know, the, the head oh, people, nice. and it was really great. And 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 see, I, I was with the public, and and, and I've got, and I've, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a whole other respect for you know. There's, I'll tell you a couple of interesting things about wine. Just as good old boys will, will appreciate. Did you know this is something I didn't know until I went up there? Did you know that when America's wine industry started popping? Mm-hmm. And they found that Napa, because Napa is kind of the same, you know, latitude as you know is 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 uh, France, you know, as you get around to wine country and stuff. And so, uh, when they started noticing that Napa could make good wines, they were trying to perfect that. Well, they brought wine vines from some of the finest wineries in yeah. France, mm-hmm. and they put them in the dirt in Napa, but they died. I didn't know that they kept they died. Because they couldn't, they, they wouldn't survive, and so the only way that, that so the so the next thing that they were doing, so they took some of America's vines and took them to France. Okay, well, when they did that, it was a huge mistake because there was a parasite in American's dirt oh. that was killing it. So when they carried it's like the smallpox so, blankets. So, so, so when they carried the American roots over there and planted them, they spread that oh. parasite. So now all of France's wines are the vines are 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 uh, uh, what do they call? They fuse them into American roots because they're having to grow their their vines on American roots over in France now. I had no because, idea because because we spread that parasite and and the, the the only way they could get the 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 French vines to grow over here was to fuse them into the roots. And so they'll take in they literally take make an incision and they in both the, the vines they, they they wrap them together and then they tape them until it's they like running wire. They go, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And so so that's that's something that I that I learned that I didn't know. Right. And uh, and then uh, the the other thing is that. The other thing is, is that there's a there's actually a place just south of Napa that's called Paso Robles, and that was an old cowboy town, a rancher town, and mm-hmm. they've actually found that there's better wine that grows there because of the way the mountain range is angled and the moisture comes off the ocean and settles oh, on, 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 on the grapes, and then and then and then the sun bakes them throughout the day. It, it's a it's a total rock and roll thing. I, I, oh, yeah. I I've got a new respect for it. They went up there. You're and, like a weatherman. I mean, literally one hill to the next, you're going to get a different taste. Yeah, yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's cool to go up there. And again, it made her happy, and I got there some booty, go. and life is good. You got laid in Napa. <laughs> Hey, Jesse, Jesse got laid in Napa. Now, speaking of that, I was on your Instagram, and I have to ask, is this, did you see this in person? Let me get it dialed up here. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, those two turtles fucking? <laughs> yes. Where the hell is that? What that that's fuck? my... It says greatest day of my life, is part that, that, one. Listen, you can listen to my audio. I'm, I'm saying this is the that's greatest day of my I've life. Ever seen. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's what I just said. Watch, he is knocking the bottom out of this shit. Got a bit. Knocking the... Just pile driving. Knocking the Watch shit. Watch it. Well, look at She's That's just how running. Baby turtles are made. Jesse, what are they doing? They're, they are uh, praying. <laughs> praying. Is that, is that, it's called the turtle prayer. God damn. He is fucking her like you don't even know. And is she really okay, trying to run? Yes. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere. That ain't nothing. You keep watching it. They make a full lap around that yard. Wow. Oh, this is not consensual. And, 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 uh, but if you Man, listen real close, you hear him go. Oh. They make noises. Yeah, listen. Oh. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, see that pumping? Let's see life. him pumping. Oh. I've, always to see <laughs> I've always wanted to see this. You said. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, is that not the greatest day of your life yes, to see turtles? Have you ever seen turtles fucking? Never in my life. No. I mean, I kind of knew they did. I, I watched them from it. beginning to end. That's I couldn't get enough it. of it. It was You're the like, best porno I've ever seen in my life. Yes, he's like, give me some pop. I'm going to watch seen. this. I'm Look glad it's there. I'm going to throw up. Oh, my God. Oh, I hear the noise. I went home, put a yard sled on my on my wife's back, and turned her on her, on her stomach and chased her around the bedroom. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Is that not great? No, dude, that's rock and roll. I like that. So, so that was in Austin, Texas, at this billionaire's house that he he throws a party every year. He owns turtles. He owns those turtles. He he owns a lot of shit. He, this is some it's a tech some tech guy, and I was I was asked if I'd come and play his private party. You and say yes. It was. It, well, it was. There'll it, be turtles fucking. Well, it, well, it was. It was. Uh, Eddie Trunk was there. Um, uh, uh, Joan Jett was there. Um, was it just you or Jackal? It was just me. I would. It was. We just had a jam. So you just like, hey, we're gonna put you with Joan Jett. It was, okay. It was Joan Jett and uh, uh, what's the uh, George Lynch and um, oh, awesome. Well, Doc some, some some guys that play with Vince Neil and and um, uh, uh, Eddie Trunk and I mean and Joan and I mean it, it was just a jam at this guy's house and it, he set a full concert stage up in uh, he took the side wall down of it to his tennis courts set the stage there and where all of his the way his lawn came up around where his garage and stuff was he had all these people like an amphitheater and then he had turned his his his, his five car garage was turned into a bar and um, and and he had up a damn party and it was the craziest thing I've ever seen how much it, does a guy like that pay for somebody like it's you it's a good day <laughs> can you can you can you give us an idea? I just I'm very blessed that he cared that I was there. <laughs> I just want he's being humble. I know he's being humble, but I want to get an idea. Is it over forty? Yes, you know, there's just a there's a. He said one day you're going to be doing an interview with somebody, a close friend, and they're going to ask you. And you're you gotta, damn right, and you got a close friend he, right he said, here. He said, you got to know. promise on. me that you'll never tell us. How many chainsaws could you buy? <laughs> five or nine. Okay. Five, shit. Five or nine. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, wow. Good but, job, son. But it was fun. It was fun. And, <laughs> That's but, great. But, but 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 on top of him paying me to be there to have this jam and stuff, I got right. to watch two turtles fuck. Why not? You're like, hey, dude. That's <laughs> worth the price of admission. <laughs> you just iced my cake. I would have come and I would have came and sang for free if I, I'd have known I got to see <laughs> turtles fuck. I wish I'm not up on everything that has intercourse. I know birds. Do not, I don't think, but or do they? I don't know, but turtles. I guess I, you have I knew three that. videos. <laughs> look at that! That's oh, look at that! That still frame is great. Oh my god! This is definitely one of the shows that you're going to want to watch. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah, watch yeah, this definitely, or go to his Instagram. Either one. Uh, I like yeah. the. Yeah. Did you actually see this in person? Yeah, I thought you just <laughs> yeah. uploaded this on the internet at no. first. Yeah, that's great. No, it's my own national oh, my geographic. Lord. She special. is just like, all right, son, that's enough. <laughs> All right, so tell me this much uh, as we as we move forward. I, I I want to talk everything about what you've done as far as a reality show, being a part of that, getting it started. And I, you're pretty much the one that came up with that idea, that concept of doing that out in Sturgis. It well, it's hard. Or, it's hard to say I came up with the idea. I mean, it's, it's it was just inevitable and obvious that that there was uh, an opportunity to document, uh, you know, a moment the craziness in time. that goes yeah, on. Yeah, because it's hard to imagine, um, if you will. A place that's only open for basically twelve days a year. That's it. And um, you know the rally lasts actually the, the the week. You know twelve fourteen days. And um, and you have those twelve days to make you know over three million dollars. You know just to, to just to bust your nut to you know to get out of there because you have over three hundred employees that come in and and mm-hmm. now with the, now with our new place because that place burnt down. Yeah, I knew and, that. Uh, you know, after the sad. You know, uh, the seventh season of the show, and it, it burnt down, and ten million dollars worth of ashes, and, and no insurance. God, uh, because um, <laughs> because um, uh, th- there was no running water on the property. We had to truck all the water in, and uh, you're out in the middle of the prairies of South Dakota. There was no fire department. There was only a volunteer fire department. Which God bless them, but they're the reason why it burnt down. Oh no, uh, yeah, the, the the one the 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 head volunteer fireman chief shows up. And he was walking around the building that he knew was on fire, which was the main part of the front part of the bar. And he was walking around feeling of the heat so he could figure out where it was located so he could figure out how to get into the place. Mm-hmm. And while he was around back, two other volunteer firemen showed up and they cut a hole in the front door. And when they did, it backdrafted oh, no. because the wind was blowing in that direction and it blew up like a bomb. And then and the front part of the bar was attached to a distillery that we had there. And which was underneath that 300 foot long old 100 year old bridge that we'd moved from the Belfouche River out there. And, and there was two totes of 180 proof liquor 
God. two big to- two two oh. big totes that's a bomb. Uh, 180 proof and so when the fire hit that the whole property Ooh. went up and so i was in jackson hole wyoming on tour with jackal michael was down in uh, in trimble tennessee and he calls me uh, he calls me in the middle of the night and says dude the, the full throttle's on fire and i was out of it. i passed it. i was like oh man would well, keep me posted what's happening you know and and and, and, and no, it's and, fully engulfed. We, we, we hung up. He called me back in about within an hour. He said, "Dude, the full throttle is burning to the ground." And he goes, "Look, check your phone," because I'd been nodding, you know, nodding out, sleeping on the bus, and and I, I I started looking, and I came up immediately. And so at five o'clock in the morning, I was down at the airport calling the emergency number at Hertz to get a car, and um, and I got a car. Uh, that morning and rolled out about nine hours across from Jackson, Wyoming to Rapid City. And Michael had to drive two hours to Memphis and then catch a connection in Minneapolis on into uh, uh, to Rapid City. So we actually got there about the same time. And I picked him up and we went to the Holiday Inn downtown uh, Sturgis mm-hmm. because our lawyers had told us don't even bother going to the property because the federal government had already seized control of the property. Same. The ATF, the 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 uh, everybody, uh, the, uh, they had all seized the property. Every every government entity was out there, and uh, and and so they they had uh, shut us in. So we went to the Holiday Inn and sat there and cried for a while, and uh, and and consulted with the attorney because um, they were there. They thought there was some kind of uh, foul play. And so you're they, like, we don't have insurance. They, they, would, would, uh, Does that make any sense they, would, to you? Well, they didn't. They didn't just. They didn't know that at all. Oh, okay. uh, and so, but they eventually later on that day, they uh, called us and said that we could come out to the property, and they escorted us on a perimeter tour of the ashes. And it looked like a nuclear bomb had went off. It was. I mean, the entire thirty acres was just smoldering ashes. And there was nothing and, salvageable. And, nothing. Oh, there. just the statues, the, the the big steel statues that we mm-hmm. have, and the and the bridges that were mangled from the heat. Then uh, those bridges are over about a football field, football field long. Big steel structure bridges that are over a hundred years old that used to cross the Belfouche River, and they were the old bridges that had the wooden slats across them for single. Very cool. Back when the advent of cars, you know, yeah. and uh, and that particular bridge came across the Belfouche River where the settlers used to go down the old business. Mark Trail to settle um, the West, That's and and we had dammed the river up and moved it out, and uh, but um, and it set like thirty foot up in the air. I, as the bridge, I jumped off that one year uh, of the shoot TV show. Um, so yeah, but um, so um, but we got out there, and I was trying to be strong for Michael because uh, he's my brother, and I love him, and and, I, and it was his baby that was that had burnt to the ground, and and I was I was being strong for him, and he was holding up great. And we started walking around the perimeter, and we got to the back side where my apartment was, and I had a little cabin there. So the apartment was just a little one room cabin with a bathroom, and and it was right off the corner of the stage, and where I'd had so many magical nights, you know, sure. and so much of my life had been dedicated to that. And I got around there, and I just bawled like a pussy. I mean, I yeah. just, I mean, I, 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 I cried. I'll tell you right now, and I still, I want to choke up now thinking about it because um, it was so much of our life and defined so much of what we'd accomplished and become and and um and just so many special nights and uh yeah and uh but we licked our wounds nobody got hurt nobody got killed uh we were on 30 acres there and we went down the road we got 600 acres now we have a thousand rv hookups we have uh 300 cabins we have olympic size swimming pool we have a convenience store we have a restaurant we have a helicopter pad for tours to take helicopter tours we have a a a dirt track where they race pre-1920s harley davidson's we have a firing range you can shoot we bring in cars and vans for you to blow up we have 50 caliber guns and uzis and and all this stuff we have uh, (laughs) we have uh they brought a thing this year called a lottie which is even bigger than a fifty cal, and Damn. you shoot it, and it sounds like all hell. And uh, but but we have we have all of that on the property, and um, oh, and then I forgot we have fifty acres of, right in the middle of all that. This is the full throttle saloon, the largest stage. Imagine that. Good. Yeah, three hundred voluptuous go-go dancing bartenders. Uh, mm. You know, uh, it, it, uh, beyond Thunderdome. You know, fantasy <laughs> fantasy island for adults, people who love. <laughs> You know, beautiful women, a, a badass motorcycle, and a cold belly washer, which happens to be Jesse James Bourbon. But yeah, we uh, we seriously got um, got an incredible facility out there now, it's and huge. It's, and we're the official home of Harley Davidson. We have uh, we have all their demo rides for their new models. We have uh, all their uh, they, they do all, they have a, they they called us uh, one month before the rally this year. Harley called and said, "Hey, we're moving everything from the city out to your property." And I said, okay, great. What does that mean? And they said, we need a 140-foot by 60-foot building, which has got eight garage doors going down the side of it that are 
14 foot wide and 10 foot high. And we have uh, we have this building, and we brought that thing up out of the ground in three and a half weeks this year. So they needed it's, you to build that? We built it in three and a half weeks. And I physically, I, I mean, I pushed a boulder uphill with every single one of the, the asphalt, I mean, the concrete guys, the asphalt guys, the builders, and, and the weather wasn't playing ball with us. I spent two 11-hour days and half of a third day on a backhoe personally backfilling the, the foundation for that so they could pour the slab. See, Brett, I, that's called good old boy shit. I mean, yeah. we worked our ass Man off. Work. Can we take the show on the road? Yeah, we should. I would go to Sturgis. Are you Just, kidding? Jesse's yeah. been begging for I, years. Do you know how many people I could fuck with there? I'd probably get my ass kicked. I'm about you to would. get my ass kicked probably anyways. <laughs> yeah, no. You, you, you will have questions to ask. The one thing that we do on this show, and you, we, we're kind of let ourselves into it. Were you ever a cigarette smoker? No. All right, me either. A uh, cigarette break. We give somebody a cigarette break where you can promote whatever you want to promote. So I just want to let people know how they can get a hold of you or find your liquor. You've kind of done that, but is there anything you want to say, like in the span of what it takes a normal man to smoke a cigarette? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm gonna cut your ass off right I, there. I, I got we you. know what it is about two minutes. We, we give three minutes. About well, three minutes to smoke a cigarette. I just uh, the main thing is to go to pappyhoylecampground.com. P a p p y h o e l campground.com. Next year's the 80th anniversary of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. We've been going 80 years now. It's, it's unbelievable. And uh, but check it out, pappyhoylecampground.com. Uh, follow obviously follow Jackal's Facebook page and Jackal.com as well as uh, Jesse James Dupree's Instagram and uh, just uh, that, the main thing is that and, and then swing by Sherlock's. Um, and uh, on uh, Alpharetta and the mm-hmm. Sherlock's in Kennesaw Barrett Parkway, register to win the Jesse James Bourbon Dean guitar that we've got on display there that you can win, and then be be ready for Jackal come into the yes. Buckhead Theater for the Rock 100.5. Does it count if I start advertising what Rock 100.5's no, got going? A, on? No, it doesn't count. Actually, Rock, that's okay. Okay, Rock 100.5. <laughs> right now, you just put your cigarette away from your lips. There you go. You're Rock 100.5's <laughs> Halloween show that we're doing at the Buckhead Theater, and uh, tickets are on sale now. And uh, you got to check that Jackal's homecoming, and uh, we're glad to be coming. We we uh, we got fussed at because we'd skipped a, a year or so from playing, but we, we came in last year, had a great show. You were there. I was there. Yeah, yeah. it was a great, great show, man. I have a blast. It's a fun room, man. They got they got they got a really nice setup there and uh, turn it into Jackal's Bar and Grill. No, and we talk about this. I will tell you, if you go to a Jackal show, Jack, Jesse will bring you out on stage and hand you one of these in front of the crowd. It's a family reunion. It's, it is a family reunion. And he works with some of the most talented alcoholics I've ever met in my damn life. Uh, because I don't know you, who is the blonde lead guitarist guy. He's it, no, maybe he's rhythm guitar. Do you know who I'm talking about? Blonde. He drinks tequila. Oh, you talking about Roman? Not Roman. Uh, I know Roman. Yeah, it's the other well, dude. Roman maybe. and Jeff. 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 Jeff yeah. Maybe the guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, the guitar player. So he sits there. It's the first time I think I'd been around him, and you know, and I didn't know what he drank. And the dude's like, and this is a Wild Bill's performance. Yeah. And we're at Wild Bill's, and I'm drinking with Jesse, and my wife and I are going on vacation the next morning. We have a uh, 7.30 a.m. <laughs> flight out of Hartsfield, and we're going to stay at her parents' because they're already in Mexico, so we're going to meet them. So I'm like, I, she's like, Steve, we need to be packing. We need to get up. We need to get some. I'm like, I got to go to Jesse's <laughs> show. I'm sorry. And she's like, okay, well, are we going to stay late? I'm like, Honey, we'll stay as late as we need to. I'm trying to give her like proper answers yeah, 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 instead yeah. of telling her this night's going to go. It's going to be a lot, yeah, yeah. So I get there and she doesn't know it. And one of your guys is like, doesn't drink Jesse, and he drinks tequila. So he's giving me some tequila. So Trust me, they drink everything, but he does get on tequila binges. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was on a damn tequila binge, and I'm like <laughs> drinking the hell out of that. So then he brings a bottle up. They all got bottles on side stage. Well, Jesse is front man, and he's doing his thing. And you wait when when you're at a jackal show. Jesse knows when the time is to bring out somebody, and he makes you a celebrity. Liberty for a second. So he brings me out, Southside Steve. No, 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 no. So I get it and I got to impress him. So I try to down about, you know, 20% of the bottle. Bubbles. bubbles. Show me some bubbles. And I'm like, yeah, and he wants to see bubbles. You're like, and you're just killing it. And then I go over to the guitarist and he's like, hey, man. And I'm drinking his tequila. I was alcohol poisoned in two hours and still functioning. <laughs> And uh, and yes. I end up getting a ride home from an Uber, but Uber no Uber wouldn't come because my my credit card uh, the one thing I was outdated or something like that the credit card on file so a listener takes us home that was super creepy and now he knows where my wife lives and her parents and she's freaking I throw up in the driveway I crawl in I don't remember anything and she would not talk to me until after we had gone through uh, security customs at, well you yeah, yeah. We, we, you know how customs, we were the first it takes a days, while huh? the first day or so of the, the vacation must have been hard it was horrible I mean. How do you not talk to somebody driving to the airport? I get it. But during the whole flight, not one word. And then through customs where you have to interact, not one word. 
Just she was cold furious. silence. Furious. I, I was like, I, I bet that alcohol was coming through your skin. Oh, I you could smell I it. I guarantee you could smell him. I oh, guarantee. There I was, was like, so much alcohol in it. You could, you know, how when people drink <laughs> oh, so yeah. much, it just coming out of their pores. Yeah. Oh, totally. He, he had drank that much that night. Oh, and I get out in Mexico and the temperature's like 109 or something. I'm like, <gasps> everybody's getting high just sitting next to me. But I want to thank you for almost ruining my marriage. But that's what Jesse James will do. To he, he gets down. He gets down in the car, and it's one of those things where his head just kind of bobbles to the right, like, "Oh, I see you, man." <laughs> just, <laughs> I kept going. I gotta say bye, Jesse. I gotta say bye, Jesse. It's a bad night. It, it was, but it, but it's damn, damn good liquor. Great times. Uh, but I just want to say that we're glad you're coming back. That is going to be a great show in October. So tickets are on sale right now if you want to get those. And that is a Rock 100.5 performance. And you don't want to miss these guys, man. And that's right. Are you mid tour then? Where? What, what is your tour situation? October 18th. Uh, I think we're. Uh, I think we're in South Carolina the night before, and then we come through to Atlanta, and then we head on down to Florida. Okay. We're, we're in a, uh, Daytona Beach for the bike week the next day. You don't stop. No. You do not. Hit it and get it. Hit it and get it. But this is a point in time now where Brett, I, okay. I allow him. Okay. Scares the hell out of me. All He's right. got an edge to him. Uh, he 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 graduated from Alabama, if that tells you anything. I'm from Atlanta, though. I'm from Roswell. Okay. But he's got normal questions. I told him, I said, there's one guy I can bring on the show you cannot offend. Is Jesse James Dupree, and there's oh, nothing. Yeah. So he kind of challenged me by okay. saying, "No, that. I didn't challenge you. I don't Basic. want to challenge you." But, I took it as a challenge. But Jesse, okay. Jesse has been naked on stage in front of five hundred thousand people, so I, you can't throw him too easily. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna throw. Him. Actually, the funny thing is, I didn't really know who you were until I found your TV show when I was younger. Okay, and I your became TV a fan. Show. Well, fuck you. Well, it is a fucking, <laughs> it is a TV show. Yeah, it was a TV show. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's and, all you know about we'll, me. Well, kiss my ass. Yeah. We'll get into it in a little bit. Okay. Uh, so the I'll bring same, it on. Let's same, it. The same thing I asked Ed Roland. Very first question. Okay. Because you're the second rocker we've had on the okay. show. When James Hetfield and Dave Grohl die, will rock and roll die with them? Um, no. there's not a lot of younger rock guys coming out right now. No, I see what you're saying. That's a, a very valid point. And uh, I, I'll tell you a side story that, uh, you know, we, our first album came out at the same time as Nirvana did. And, and of course, Jackal is a blue collar, you know, version mm -hmm. of an ACDC mix, Black yeah. Oak, Arkansas, just a celebration of the fundamentals of rock and roll, two guitar, bass and drums, chainsaw, if you will, whatever mm -hmm. it takes to get the job done. And uh, we came out right in the middle of that whole Seattle grunge which was probably what you were really into as a kid was the the nirvana i was born in 89 so i didn't give a shit so, about oh, oh yeah you didn't, <laughs> okay <laughs> well you're saying major nigel then so but yeah but yeah so he the, likes new kids on the block i got you well i know i was actually that was before me too yeah, i was before backstreet you, yeah, boys and yeah, sing yeah, yeah. Backstreet so, boys. but anyway so so the nirvana guys were on the same label as us and they all came out to uh we, we played a show in seattle mm -hmm. and uh they were all slam dancing we broke into I Stand Alone, and they, and they were slam dancing. And the security kicked Nirvana out the side door. Hit it. Get, kicked them out. And uh, and so I, I yelled during the song. I yelled at my guitar tech. I said, go get them back in the building. So he went over to the side door, kicked it up, and brought them back in. But they were drinking draft beer out of gallon milk jugs. And and at the end of the night, Kurt Cobain was sitting in Courtney Love's lap like a baby. And we we all had to help carry him to the car. That puss couldn't drink. And, and, uh, well, no, I'm, I'm saying, but, 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 but I'm saying this. Uh, it, but, Speak but, ill of the but, dead. And no, my, my point is, though, the fact that Dave Grohl, I mean, look at the career that guy's built. Unbelievable. I've Unbelievable. seen Foo Fighters five times. Stupid, incredible. He's awesome. So what a, and what an inspiration. I, I pray. That um, that that his enthusiasm for you know because he reaches so many young people. I hope that he, he does keep it from dying and keeps it going because I'm a huge fan. Well, as Hetfield well. does oh, the hold same on here, with Metallica. Here, yeah, here's a little jackal right here. This is what uh, what 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 I guess Mr. Nevermind almost died to. Drunk in Courtney's lap with Jesse on stage playing this. Very sexual artist. I like it. I wrote that song for Kansas. For Kansas? Yeah. Down on me? Yeah. I can see them playing it. Yeah. I, mean. yeah. I was. Right. I wrote it for Kansas, but but this was back before Jackal, and I was. Uh, I okay. Was, I was managing Danny's over there on Forty One, and uh, whenever Nigel was born, this was the year you were born, and I wrote this song the year you were born, and uh, and so. Um, were you married? Year. You were married then. Yeah, right? I was married. Nigel was colicky. And, uh, and and I was uh, I was managing Danny's and um, and the, we'd went to a party 
that Fred from Magruder's had mm-hmm. thrown. And Fred God. and Fred was living. Fred managed Charlie Magruder's, and Fred was living with Phil Earnhardt, the drummer from Kansas. And so we were over at that party, and people were talking about the band that I was in at the time, and they're talking about that they, 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 they enjoyed the band. I was, and I and I met Steve Walsh, the singer for Kansas, was, was at that party. Do you remember the name and, of the band then? I was I was in PG thirteen at the time. That's right. Yep. That's right. And uh, with John Hayes from Mother's Finest and Damn. and Jimmy Puckett, the legendary Jimmy Puckett and Goat, and it was the greatest band ever for me. Those uh, those are all guys I grew up watching, so it was an honor to be playing with them. And um, and Steve Walsh was at that party, and he says uh, he goes, "Yeah, we should write some songs together sometime." Well, I thought he was being serious. I mean, I, I seriously, I thought he was, you know, I thought, okay. I would have too. And, and uh, so, I'm, and like, so, I'm writing. So, so I basically wrote this song, and uh, and I thought, well, you know what, I'll, I'll share it with him and whatever he wants to do with it. And they still had a record to do. Kansas still had a record to record at that time with Epic, I believe it was. And um, and so I tried to track him down, you know, and, and I just he basically blew me off. And um, and then his wife came to me at Danny's and wanted to know if I would let a band she was managing come and play. And I said, sure. So he came out to see that her, his wife's band play. And I thought, oh, this is a chance for me to share that song with him. So I drag him off over to the side and I play the song. And, and again, he, oh, yeah, he's not, but he talked a bunch of shit, but he, then he blew me off. So I just let it go. So then fast forward, this is a true story. I swear on my mother that what I'm telling you is a true story. I, can't, I cannot make this up. Fast forward within the next year, Jackal's kicking and we end up getting signed, and then another few months goes by, and we're in pre-production to do the first record. Brendan O'Brien comes into Atlanta, and he and John Colladen are sitting down at Rehearse Too Much, which was a room that we'd rented down, a rehearsal room, mm-hmm. and, they, and John Colladen said, I want to hear every song you guys have ever written. I want to hear it in consideration for what we might put on your first record. Good God. So I was going to be a long day, so, boys. So, so I, was working up, I was working up songs that I thought we would throw away. Right, and because I, I was going to give him some songs to throw away, so I could focus him on the songs that I wanted to put on. Hey, the you're first trying record. to play him. So, so we we worked up down on me, which in my mind was a Kansas song, and I heard it being produced more like the foreigners version of "I Want to Know What Love Is" with the mm-hmm. big chorus. For, you know, I feel the sun shining down on me with a you know, and and, and I kind of heard the dust in the wind kind of a production gotcha. with with down on me. And so I never could really imagine and even to this day, when I play Down on Me, I think of that version in my head of Kansas. Because I, for me, I, we played that song, and I was just... That's my favorite Jackal I, I was, song. Yeah, but I was just... You know, and I just I seriously didn't think that it was going to make... And we got through playing it, and he goes, I love that song. And I'm thinking, holy fuck. So now, <laughs> now I've I'm, I, I, I'm got to deal with this song. Well, I swear to God, <laughs> oh, this is the true, a true story. The door opens up to that rehearsal room and fucking Steve Walsh walks in. Hey, you still got that song? No, he comes in. No, he comes in and John Collin goes, look guys, it's Steve Walsh. And, we're, and I'm sitting there going, oh fuck, you can't, you can't script this. Yes. He comes in and hey John, how you doing? And John Collin goes, guys, can you believe this? This is legendary Steve Walsh, you know, from Kansas. You know, I said, hey, yeah, good to see you, Steve. And I'm just standing up there, you know, we got our instruments around our neck. We're just standing there and, and uh, John goes, what are you doing now? And by this time, Kansas Records had come and went. That last record didn't do anything, mm-hmm. and they didn't have any songs or anything. And it made a dent at radio, and it was just over with. So um, John goes, well, you know what I told you? Whatever that, what he told Steve Walsh. He goes, you know whatever I told you? And Steve goes, yeah. He goes, I know. You know, He goes, we're just doing the Weekend Warrior thing. I'll be in touch, whatever. And so then he ends up leaving the room. And John goes, can you believe that? Steve Walsh just came into your, your rehearsal. You know? And I said, you know that song? That we just played you that, that you like that you liked. I said I wrote it for those guys, and I said that dude blew me off a couple of times when I was trying to give it to him. And John, and Kaladner, swear to God, he goes, "Well, do you know what the moral to that story is, Jesse Dupree?" And I said, "What?" He goes, "You've got a hit, he don't." <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true nice. story. You're like, thank you. That's a true story. And I still am th- going, this ain't no fucking hit song. But it's so great. And it ended up being one of the biggest songs we had. Isn't it, it crazy? Down on me, when will it rain? I stand oh. alone, the lumberjack, push comes to shove. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, Feel I, I, free I, I, to get will it rain yeah. on there before we get Jesse yeah. out here. For those of sure, you, sure. and if this is an education for anybody about Jackal, then I'm damn glad you're listening. Now, I, I like the, uh, you know, I, I like my radio stations. I even listen to a little bit of talk here and there. 
but I do like to throw on a little uh, old school rock and roll on my serious. And yeah. you guys are all over Headbangers Ball, man. Yeah, they, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, Hair Nation, we're, 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 Hair Nation we're plays actually, the Hair crap. Nation and Ozzy's Boneyard. Both of them play the hell yeah, out of Yeah, play the hell yeah. out of Jackal. Been very, very fortunate to have that, that support. It's so cool when I hear it, man. It, I get, you know, I'm like, that's my boy. There you go. Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> so, what other question you got now that we're like in this love yeah. state? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, both are entertainment. Yeah. Which do you think is better? Being live at a concert, like a show or anything like that, or at a sporting event? Uh, I'd definitely rather be at a live rock and roll show. See, I, I disagree. Okay. A sporting event can only happen once the way it happens. If I go to your show, I can see the same thing in Atlanta and Nashville and Dallas and Birmingham. It's, it's the same thing over and over for a lot of shows. I bet you don't do a show the same way ever. I, I would, but a lot of I, bands do. I would challenge you to come and, and see a show. Then I mean, we we have fun. It's I mean, and you're not wrong. There there's a lot of of, of uh, consistency within what you do that that, that the fans are going to be expecting you to do. But sure. every every night can take you somewhere, and every night should take a band somewhere different. And uh, whether it be the crowd or the room or the sound of the room or the whatever the case may be, and but yeah, I mean, I I, I never cease to amaze myself. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, you just uh, get I, done. I, God I, dang, I'm awesome. Yeah, I, I have a good time. You know, I'm, I'm a god yeah. dang yeah. rock star. Yeah, I have a good time. Well, you're listening to uh, Jesse James Dupree right here on the Yet yeah, Come On Show, brought to you by Oxygen Financial, with two locations in the Atlanta Metro. Again, right here. Uh, in the lovely Alpharetta, or you can go to Buckhead. Just go to oxygenfinancial.net. And right now, Brett Barney is doing his damnedest. I, I, I lubed it up, all right, with two pretty Easy softball. Ones. Okay, those are, uh, okay right. let's, let's, let's do get, this. What, what are we jamming to right here? <laughs> this is When Will It Rain. Yeah. Oh, when Will It Rain. This is a great song. And you know what? Your, your band, y'all, y'all are like, uh, uh, you know, and I, this is going to sound like totally homo, but y'all are a bunch of good-looking, like, Hip, cool looking dudes. <laughs> well, those guys, those guys have gotten better looking over the years. I, I'm the only turd in the punch bowl, but, but uh, yeah, they, they. No, but I'm serious. You see these guys, you're like, man, they're all they got their own little thing. I'm like, this is a good looking, cool band. I mean, there are a lot of bands. We got to be honest, that aren't good to look at. No, they haven't aged too well. Yeah, no, they're not aging well at all. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm fighting that fight myself. But like I said, the guys, everybody, you know, everybody takes good care of themselves, and yeah, and we all take it serious. All right, I can tell you right yeah. now, I've got uh, someone that does Botox. I'm coloring my hair currently, <laughs> and uh, just do 25 push ups a morning. It's working for me. There yeah, you go. Bullshit. I know. I know. Um, I need to shut up. <laughs> I got Jesse James Dupree. Jesse James Dupree. I know, dude. Not only can you hear me, but so can the bottle. I'm trying not to be an right, asshole, room because I actually really like the guy. All right. All right. All right uh, when naming your booze, did you intentionally try to make it the longest name you could possibly think of for somebody trying to order a shot? Because, I mean, dude, if I walked up to a bar, can I get the original Jesse James American Outlaw bourbon? That's, that's, too, that's too long like, for what, How do I order it? <laughs> Yelling that I over. I mean, that crowd. is like, yeah. like it's like, hey, can I get a shot of Jack? Hey, can I get a shot of Evan? Hey, can I get a shot of Woodford? How about like, a shot of Jesse James? Yeah. Well, I, I just, I just wanted people to, to, to take a minute and focus. So, no, it's it. Just order. <laughs> just, just, just give me a Jesse and Coke. Yeah. You know how when people eat cereal, a Jesse and Coke, a Jesse and Coke. There you go. Or, about, well, I was thinking, what about what like an outlaw and Coke? But it, you know, I, I will share this oh, with man. you. It, it is. I am amazed that because. It's like even when Steve opened up the show, he 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 built all that out. Jesse's Amer- or, or, or America's Outlaw Whiskey, Jesse James Bourbon, and 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 I'm surprised at so many people that actually read the whole thing like that because I I didn't intend on it to answer your question. No, um, I got a buddy of mine and I uh, got drunk one night whenever I had the concept to come out with a bourbon. And uh, and we seriously put this label. To, I put album covers together. I put videos together. I've done t- edited TV shows. There's nothing ever has come together so easily than that label for that bourbon. That's we sat, awesome. we sat down and had some drinks. We took that old Confederate Eagle mm-hmm. and and we took the banner in there. And we put, and and we framed it up just like that. I sent it to the artist and here's what I want and he came back and we said that's it. it's the only time in my career going on 30 plus years now with the band and stuff that that we've that we've had something happen so effortlessly. There you go. How you like that shit? Hey, you know, I just think I just think it's a long ass name. Long if I was walk, if I was walking in to order a shot, I'm like, what do I just, say? Just, just say, give me a Jesse James and Coke. Why don't you try? I was thinking an outlaw. An outlaw, yeah. It it is, is, I, yeah. You know what? You're I, and you're not wrong. People say I, I'm drinking some outlaw. They, I mean, it it is. It, I did not intend it that way, but it has been. It, what you've pointed out a very obvious fact 
that that that, 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 that people do refer to. That's kind of what ways. I do. Yeah, yeah. It so. is. It is what you do. But just make no mistake about it. We're two outlaws right here. You're with, yeah. Okay. You're with gunslingers and you're a farmer. He's scared. I can tell he's yeah. shaking. He is. You're, okay. You're oh, all right. Well, fuck you. Let's do this. I was <laughs> easy. Gonna, oh, I was going to throw it down now. I was going to skip this one for okay. a second. Right. You know, Jesse. Bring it on. Jesse's been in you about already, you already 132 <laughs> fights. I just right. want you to know. Right. Bring it on. You already know this one. Are you or or you have her? Okay. Oh, Fuck. great start. Right. <laughs> are you, or 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 have you ever been called a poor man's Brett Michaels? No, I've been called a poor man's um, uh, Jim Dandy. Who's man, that? that? Jim Dandy, Black Oak, Arkansas. There you go. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it, I mean, the, but but you know what? I, I was compared to Jim Dandy Mangrum so much in the beginning. And I had actually seen Black Oak, Arkansas, because they used to open up for everybody back in the 70s when they'd come through and play. And I never really thought anything about them. I did not own any of their records. But I became a fan because of the people comparing us. Relating you to and, that guy. And, and although I did not own their records and stuff, I will proudly say that. I, I mean, you ask who Jim Danny Mangrum is, you should go check it out. The guy was David Lee Roth before David Lee Roth ever thought about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. And, um, and yeah. And, and as far as Brett Michaels go, I mean, again, that was a different – I, I really don't know of any. That's com- apples don't. I, I don't know any comparisons of myself to Brett. I mean, Brett was your a, hair. No, his hair. Re- he's got full head of hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Brett. Brett hasn't taken that so- cowboy hat off. In sorry, uh, Brett. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny because my next question I wrote was: yeah. If you and Brett Michaels got put in a cage with a pair of scissors, who would be the one walking out with their hair still intact? Oh, I know. That's not a fair fight. So you're gonna kick the <laughs> shit out of him, poor That's, Brett. Yeah, it would just it'd be kind of a moot point, but yeah, so it's all good. When was the last time <laughs> the you man sh- ain't even gonna answer because he knows yeah, he whooped yeah, Brett's yeah. ass? When was the last time you shopped at Kmart? Brett, Brett's actually a good, a good. We just had Brett and Sturgis, and uh, he's uh, he just lost his father last week. Oh, so, sorry to hear so, that. And uh, and he's a great guy, and he just supports our so, our men and women in uniform. I hear he's very yeah, nice. He, he, he's, he's a nice guy, and uh, he uh, you know I've been, I've, I've, this this is me not sugarcoating anything. Brett lives in. Brett Michaels mode all the time. I mean, I I can go into the lead singer jackal mode quick if I need to, but there's also a, a time to let that shit go down. And there's certain people. Steven Tyler never stops being Steven Tyler, but like Brian Johnson from ACDC, I mean, you know, he'll come. Stay, oh yeah, he'll come stay at the house. There's no bodyguards, and he's not. You know, he's just a dude. There, there's there's different people. <laughs> There's different people make different decisions about their their entertainment side of things. Are you going to stay in character all the time? Or are you going to hang that shit up when you're not on stage? Yeah, exactly. And it's too much for me. It's too much effort to put on eyeliner for a daytime interview with you guys. So forgive me. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and just and just be the the, the redneck that I am from Kennesaw, Damn and, and you have to deal with there's it. There's no so. eyeliner over there. There's I'm, not, I'm not putting eyeliner on no, for you. The, the funny thing is the way you say that is um, awesome. I, I worked on a conservative talk station on the morning show, and we were bringing in all the candidates that were running in this past recent election. Everybody, I mean, Secretary of State, it didn't matter who they were. They brought in all their uh, men, all their handlers. You know, the only person who didn't bring in a single handler showed up by himself, jeans, just a nice button down and a little vest or whatever. Who was it? Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp. Okay. Brian Kemp was the only one that came in. He hung out with us for an hour. Did you see his commercial where he had a gun? Kemp, yeah. Dude, Kemp, guy, he Kemp, handles it. Kemp took me right there. I was like, dude, you're awesome. You're, you're just a normal person. Um, do you sh- or When was the last time you shopped at Kmart? Well, I shop at Walmart frequently. But uh, because the, 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 yeah, I, but you don't like Kmart. I used to go down to Kmart. There's not really Kmarts exist anymore. They're gone. No, they're I thought gone. you hated Kmart because yeah, they wouldn't they sell your album. You, didn't they? Well, they 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 did blow us off on the first album, but they eventually started carrying it in. We we had to take we but we conceded we did a version of our first album that didn't have "She Loves My Cock" on it, and uh, we were the first band ever. <laughs> Boo. We were the first band ever that that did a. Two versions of the same album, one censored, one not censored, and and t- <laughs> tied it to the same uh, to the same uh, UPC hey, code. For the record, between yeah. brothers, when it says "Does she w- she loves my cock," yeah. and it's on the front or whatever, you can't really sell that. It came. Up. <laughs> I don't know how many. Places. Well, they didn't let us sell it there, so I mean, I don't know where you can sell it. It I sold it everywhere else. I know. Did you ever think about when you named it that you're like, ah, that's not really radio friendly. Or you didn't give a shit. Yeah, I, I I grew up because I'm I'm not calling I, you a no, sellout, no, listen, but you got to make money yeah, doing what you I, love I, to I do. I was playing the bars. I mean, you're talking about Brett Michaels and such. While ago. I'll give you an example. I I grew up in the '70s when I started. I graduated in 
seventy nine eighty right in that time frame. And 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 I hit the road playing bars, and I was out playing stuff like Zeppelin, The Who. We'd even do some James Brown stuff and Sly and the Family Stone, and I was doing all this kind of stuff, and I I basically missed the eighties hair thing as far because i wasn't recording stuff back then i was just out doing all the cover stuff but i was playing older stuff the acdc the who the hell yeah the, and, and, and stuff like that and and so i missed a good chunk of the 80s with with as far as that that whole the hair band scene and stuff and um um the um you know the the, the and I'm getting off track here from what what, right. what, 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 were you, what were we talking about before that as far as Kmart yeah so so yeah so um, as far as she loves my cock so <laughs> yeah that, that, that's what I was telling you great way to pick it so, back no, yeah so so I was playing those bands, slow, what's but, the name of your song yeah she loves my yeah, cock but but no 80s music had gotten so formulated right with those both power ballads no, and all right, that stuff you're right totally and the more the scene kind of be, seemed to be offensive like that because it was just so cookie cutter to all the guys that were wearing hair we never were I never was in a band wearing hairspray and all that stuff and so um um the more the, the, that eighty stuff got cookie cutter, the more I revolted in the other day. And I discovered Iggy Pop. Jimmy Puckett turned me on to Iggy Pop. Mm. And do yourself a favor, being a young man, go download off of the internet the the live bootleg of Iggy from like 1968, 69, with the songs Rich Bitch and and Cock in My Pocket. And uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> go ahead, throw your cans, throw your bottles. Your bitch will still want to fuck me. You paid five dollars to get in, and I'm making ten thousand. So screw you. I mean, all that was Iggy. <laughs> I mean, Iggy was just. I and mean, he was shirtless. Yeah, you know, I mean, and the guy sang some song. I mean, there's some of his raps. The guy, and, I mean, that guy was he was punk rock. He yeah, would break he glass and throw. But but I I heard cock in my uh, cock in my pocket. I got my cock in my pocket, and I'm rolling down the old highway. Yeah, I'm gonna whip it on you, honey. Hey, taste your blood today. I mean, it's, but when I heard that, I went, so "There's good. no fucking rules. There's, no, There's rules. no fucking rules." Not with Iggy. And so we had been watching a porno <laughs> that was a funny old porno called Anytime, Any Place. Nice. That was a that was an old seventies porno. So there was a script to this, and, one. and there was a there was a scene in that in that porno. Because they tried to make it a movie, you know, yeah. they were trying, they were trying to make it a movie, but it was it had all this fuck scenes and stuff in it, and and there was a, this lead character. And this should be your nickname. The lead character was named Skinner. <laughs> And the guy, Skinner. That's and a it, fucking terrible nickname. <laughs> I don't know. And, God. It could have stuck. So, so, Brett Barney, so, Skinner. So Skinner, had, so Skinner had a hog leg for a penis, right? Oh, and, wait. Hang on. And, yeah, That's a great nickname. There you go. So, so Skinner is, this woman's giving Skinner head in the porno. Mm -hmm. And the way they had the frame of the video, the, the, the camera, all you could see was him from his chest down and his thighs up, and half of her face was in the screen, and she's got the rest of it in her mouth, and she's doing her number on him, and she pulls off of it. The camera angle never moves. She pulls off of that hog leg, and she looks to the top of the television set because the camera angle's staying just like it is, and she looks to the top of the television set, and she says, Oh, Skinner, I love you. And then she goes back to damn getting on that thing again, and you hear him say, you don't love me. You just love my cock. <laughs> and I went, oh, my God. What man would not love to be so arrogant is and so confident is it's to be able to. You don't love me. Is, is this the cover? My cock. It's so familiar. <laughs> so I wrote. <laughs> so I wrote. I wrote. Anytime, any place. So I, I wrote that song, She Loves My Cock. <laughs> and uh, because damn. of it. Yeah. I love it. And, and, and I'd never, again, I never thought it would be on the record. Uh, the, John Collider says that's got to be on the fucking record. Yeah, yeah. that's damn good and, music. Um, yeah, and we still play it to this day. Yeah, we'll, you we'll do. That's a great lead into my next question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, and this is, remember, I wrote all this before I even met you. Okay. You seem kind of like a dick pic guy to me. Okay. And I was curious, how old were you the first time you snapped a dick pic? I've never snapped dick pics. Get the fuck out no, of here. No, because, I, the, I mean, I've seen too many. I ain't saying I hadn't wanted to, 
But I, 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 there's too many. It blows up on your face every fucking time. With I mean, you send it out on Facebook or or, mm-hmm. or, 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 no or Instagram there, or whatever. Huh? I mean, you, you, it's gonna it's gonna bite you on the ass. So the wife hasn't got one. Well, you're here's on the, road. the here's this fucked up thing. I did Playgirl magazine in 1994. The point and giggle, I was say, the point and giggle issues Playgirl. out there. You know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm backstage. Uh, you know, I did I did my photo shoot, my Playgirl shoot. At live. I will not be googling that. I, did by you the know way. that? Yeah, can no, we Google that? you didn't know that. Well, no, so I didn't. so my dick pics have been out since 1994, pre-internet. Okay, yeah. I mean, the dick pics for yeah, me. And you were had good lighting years. on that. Yeah, stuff. I was ahead of I was ahead of the curve on that. So <laughs> if yeah. if I were you and I was going to do a dick pic, I would have had somebody stand in the crowd at Woodstock and yeah. take a picture of the jumbotron with a ten foot dick. Well, they when when the Playgirl magazine shows up in Long Beach, California, because we did it at the at, uh, Jim Morrison from the Doors got naked in Long Beach and went to jail for it and such. And so that we felt it appropriate for me to do my playgirl shoot That's at awesome. Long Beach Arena. So I get on stage, we play our show, and then we're about to break into She Loves My Cock. I strip down butt naked. And, um, and, and, they, and, and I, sa- I sang the entire song naked. And they had cameras all over the place, and they shot the, the show. And, but before we went on stage, they were doing some shots back in the dressing room. And the, and the producer of the shot said, do you want a fluffer? Yeah, because they have a fluffer that'll come in and help you get a bit of an erection and such. So but not you, too much to where you can tell you've yeah, got yeah. an erection. So, so they would. Well, they they would ask me if I wanted to fluff or if I wanted a fluffer, and I said, "No, what the hell is it?" I said, "If I if I fluff back here, it's going to end up being a before and after shoot because I know which way my penis is going when I'm standing in front of three thousand people. <laughs> it's going to suck up in my like like that turtle you watched fucking while ago. <laughs> I mean, it, it, but um, so." So it just it's just me being me, and I just I just did it, and, I, and I'm not. You don't care, I, do and you? I'm not. So hell no. No, I'm before just, you drop just, your I'm pants, I'm just a man. Yeah. Now any guy gets it before you drop your pants. There's times where I'm walking around going, "Good God, what's up?" And then there's times you're like, "What? What the hell did it go?" Oh, dude, it's called a good dick day. <laughs> yeah, but so I mean, dude, I'll wake up in the morning, hop in the shower, and be like. Oh, good dick day. <laughs> yeah. So when you're sitting there in the concert, it doesn't matter whether you're any or out of your good dick day, as you put it. You just That's drop. An actual you thing. drop when you drop. When you're there in front of that many thousands of people. Well, you know, we came off stage, and um, and we go running backstage. The photographers were set up. They, they grabbed uh, the whole band. Jumped into the shot, and we took a picture of me standing there. As I and then I, then they had a car waiting on me. I jumped into the car and I left. And then the police came in looking for me, and I was gone. And I was they had me down. Where's that new long hair guy? They, they, so they had me. I was down the road, and I waited for a couple hours until the bus swung through and picked me up and got me out of town. So I left California. That's and awesome. We, and we went and did a handful of shows. We went back a couple of days later into San Bernardino, and um, and we got through playing our show in San Bernardino. And we came off off stage, uh, and the band was ahead of me coming off the stage. And and normally the road manager's there with a towel, and, and you know, and there's road crew starting to move to get the gear out. I came off the stage, and it was a ghost town. And I and I go, and I took a couple of steps off the stage ramp. Where is everybody? And all of a sudden, the SWAT team came out, slunk through my arms, back up behind my body, carried me about twenty yards across the backstage area, threw me up against the wall. And uh, started putting handcuffs on me. And there's the rest of the band. Roman's like, they, they, "Thanks for the nude thing, yeah, they, man." Yeah, they, they, well, the rest of the band was, was, they were, you know, they'd kept everybody away. They, they'd quarantined that backstage area. Oh, so they didn't want to just you. Yeah, they grabbed me, yeah, and uh, and they put me in a police car, and um, and then they carried me 90 miles back up to the Long Beach uh, jail. Oh, that sucks. And uh, and yeah. I'm and I get thrown into the to the Long Beach jail, wearing a uh, I had a fringe white jacket, leather jacket draped over my shoulders, no shirt. A pair of pants with half the ass ripped out, and 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 white cowboy boots. Oh, all the dudes are whistling on yeah. the way in. That's where you look at the boys. Go, don't let the outfit so, fool you. Wait, don't let it fool so, you. So, up, I, yeah. so they throw me into that. They throw me into the general population cell. I'm in there for an hour or so. Was well, anybody then, like, what's up with your well, outfit, bro? It, it, well, then one of the one of the guys that one of the the officers there that came to get me to to fingerprint me and stuff. He he was a rocker and was a fan of the band and. After he fingerprinted me and such, he carried me over to this cage that they had like a single person cage that was over to the side, and he put me in that. Thank God. And it actually had a phone in it, so I'd actually called home and I'd, I'd made a couple phone calls, and then, so then, um, that's crazy. Yeah. So then, this this the sergeant guy, whatever he is in charge, he comes in, sees me over in that cage, and tells them to get me out of there and put me in a cell. 
So then that guy comes and gets me and takes me down this 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 hallway to the very end cell and puts me in. And there was nobody there. There was that was kind of a, a, a vacant. Uh, so it didn't even have a mattress on the bed. It was just a vacant cell. He puts me in there. And but at the end of the hall was an old television set that was mounted up on a stand, you know, on the arm at the end of the wall. And I swear to God, I watched the debut of the Down on Me video on Headbangers Ball from that jail cell cool. on that television set. <laughs> That's a and, great story. And, and the plug for the television was in the ceiling. So the, 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 the cord from the old television set draped down and went up into the ceiling. And I watched the, the, the introduction for Ricky, Ricky Rackman. I was going to say, I watched Ricky the introduction. Rackman doing that. I watched the introduction, and then I watched the video, and right toward the end of it, that sergeant guy that had, that had told them to move me, he comes down the hall and looks at me, and he looks at the television set it, it, that I'm on the video. Hello. And then he grabs the cord and unplugs it. Dick! It's, oh my god! So I didn't get I didn't get to see the the, the wrap up after the, the video, or but but I watched that much from the cell, and then that morning the my attorneys got me bailed out. You know, God, and, what a uh, night in yeah. assless jeans. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're all kind of facial hair guys. Yeah. I was kind of curious about this, just from you personally. Yeah. What are some advantages and disadvantages to the soul patch? Um. I think you you I can't believe I can't remember if we were on air or not, but you were talking about how you were uh, you were smelling the inside of Steve's hat. Yeah, he was. Yes. To, no. Yeah, that was before this to, started to, to figure out if I yeah my to see hat if, if your hat was because you have the same hat on, and you were trying to figure out it, whose scent it was inside the hat. And then I said, to, you said you, a man can't smell his. You can't, nobody whatever. can smell their and, own and scent. Then, and then I asked like the nothing. question. I said, well, can, does that mean a man can? can can't tell if his his wife's pussy stinks, and you said I don't know. Let me smell your beard. <laughs> so, so I think you answered that question. The advantage <laughs> of the soul patch is it, it it keeps some of the some of the taste and smells around for a while. There you go. If yeah, you but, like the taste, yeah. it stays. Yeah. If you like the taint, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I really did write this, Mom, and I hold know- on, hold on, hold on, Mom. Quit listening. <laughs> yeah. You should have quit listening a while back. Okay. <laughs> don't invite me on the show without it taking it to the gutter, man. I don't care. It's a, you know I'll, what? Go, I'll, I'll blame it on Skinner here. I know. God so, dang Skinner. Okay, that's not going to fucking stick. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Brett Barney. It's my, Brett I get, Barney Skinner. I swear I wrote this before you came in here, <laughs> okay. and we had this whole discussion. You've apologized to my friend like nine times. I know, times. because this is weird, because I actually like the guy, and I was a fan of his <laughs> what's television not, show. Uh, what's not to love? Okay, um, and I wanted to do this with some emphasis. Why the fuck... Doesn't Michael Ballard ever buy or purchase or whatever the fuck storm insurance? The whole premise of the show, you guys would be like, okay, we're in Sturgis and there's some bar chick and she's stealing money from us and we got to fire her ass. And then the next thing you know, it's like, oh crap, there's a storm coming in. I didn't buy storm insurance tonight. Oh shit! I hope we don't lose a ton of money. But there were episodes that he did. Remember, there was episodes. There was one, there was and a the guy went up top. And yeah, 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 Dude, yeah. Dude, trust me. I watched yeah. the shit out of y'all show. Yeah. What What happens is, it's not that he doesn't buy storm insurance. Well, he didn't it's, buy regular insurance. No, no. no here's the. He, we, he, no, you couldn't get an insurance company to cover fire. They won't. Give oh, you, you could. But they won't. Them. They, they insane. won't. Insane. They won't cover you on fire insurance if you don't have running water, fire fire yeah. hoses, uh, suppression yeah. systems. Don't blame them. Fire departments. I mean, I mean, they just wouldn't touch it. The other thing was uh, the other, unless you, like, I'm sure you might could have if you paid astronom- astronomical amount of money. But uh, to your point, the fire insurance, the, the, I mean, the storm insurance that we take out, the rain insurance, you have to choose brackets of the day. Oh my god! So, so like this year, we we had uh, rain insurance. It rained three days this year during the rally. For the, in the two hour window prior to when our in, our rain insurance kicked in. So you got insurance from like two to and five, and that would have been a hundred thousand dollars each day if they if oh, it, if it had rained one hour later. Classic insurance. If it had rained one hour later, <laughs> it, but sucks. so so he didn't have insurance. I mean, that was a big on those times thing on the show would yeah. always be like, damn it, I don't have insurance yeah. right now. And I was but like, it, it added up when he hit it that once, though. It makes yeah, no yeah, sense yeah. to me. Somebody with yeah. a car or like rental insurance yeah. or whatnot. Um, I found an article about you. It's titled Jesse James Dupree injured in motorcycle accident near Georgia, Alabama border. It reads local celebrity, Jesse James Dupree. This is the first line. Um, I'm not going to go any further. Do you think that you're a local celebrity? I've been I've been blessed to have some people that that are aware of of the career that I've had. I think you're bigger, by the way. 
what I mean, I am local. For, I, Southside I, Steve's local celebrity. I'm a local celebrity. Well, I, I, I have I, you listed as local treasure. A local treasure. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do. Like think, I kind of think that's a slight on you. You think? I, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's touring. Yeah, I would consider. You were hanging not out local. with Nirvana. Like to say, well, local you. celebrity I, is I, kind I, of a I, dick I, move. In I appreciate an article. you saying that, but again, there's. I, I mean, it, there's. If you'd asked me that question, or you're if on it, TV, if, if it had been an issue years ago, I, I'm just at the stage of my life where I just, you know, I mean, when I'm in Sturges, you know, and I'm out, I mean, I, I literally, I, I'll tell you this, this is, this is the true story. I was in Milwaukee last year. I produced Harley Davidson's anniversary, the 115th anniversary last year. And I literally, uh, Sterling, this guy works from me, he and I were literally out pushing Porta Johns mm-hmm. into a semicircle. We were That's pushing, unbelievable. And, and, I, I, and, and I was having to stop pushing the Porta Johns to take photographs with, with fans that were coming by. <laughs> That's a strange mix. And <laughs> they, and, 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 I know you're doing a shitty job. Can and, I get a picture and, with you? And, and, Ster- and, and Sterling said, Sterling says, they've got to be wondering, what the hell are you doing <laughs> pushing a Porta John? But again, I'm just at the stage of my career, and I've dealt with so many assholes that, again, that live their celebrity, if you will, 24-7. And it's too much effort. I mean, you're not a it. local celebrity. Well, thank oh, you for he's, saying a, that. he's bigger than I thought, that. I thought that was kind of messed up that that's how the article started. And then there, I read the rest of the article. And I'm just like, glad the rest of the article didn't dude, say I was dead. Because <laughs> yeah. I got I got the fuck nailed out of it. A guy T-boned me on that motorcycle. Well, which bike were you on? One the, of the ones the white, you owned? The white hair did Oh, no. Yeah. Is that bike total? It was total, but Worth Harley Davidson in, in Kansas City rebuilt it for me as a surprise. They got a hold of it and rebuilt it. It rides crooked, <laughs> but but I still got it, dude. And I I'm remember. not kidding you. You ride it sometimes. It, it, it's it's not a line right because I, I mean I got. It's a wonder I wasn't dead. I mean, it, the, were you on you were on by yourself? Yeah, yeah. Because I've ridden with Jesse on that very bike. Uh, <laughs> Wait, on the same bike? No, not on the same bike. I had my fat boy. But uh, Jesse had that bike, and that's when Nigel was tiny. Yeah. Nigel's just a little kid on the back side of the bike, but thank God uh, nobody was on it with you. But I knew that yeah. was a rough crash. Yeah, it, it, uh, it, I just let go of the bike, and uh, and it, it threw me. I was it, it, uh, The only thing, and you're going to think I'm exaggerating, but I swear to God, this is a true story. As I was going through the air, all I could do was just I, – I, I related to it because of being shot out of the cannon on the TV show. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, into the big and, net. And, and, and so I, it was not unfamiliar to me to be ejected into the air like that because I was moving. And all I could think of was keep – when I was going into the net after I got shot out of the cannon, I was having to think about getting to my back so that, that I didn't break my neck. And when I was going through the air, when that car hit me, I was I – was it hit Starting me. To turn. It slung me, and I was in the air on my back, and I was – I was just trying to keep my head up so I didn't land with my head first backwards on the back of my head because that's what I was. And I literally, it was all slow motion to know. You ever been in an accident before? Uh, oh, yeah. So, you know, it's like for you kind of it, it, that moment's kind of slow motion for you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah and it was, it's, that's what it was like. Although I was, <laughs> I was moving through the air quite fast. Damn. I know that I need to wrap some of these up and I only have three more. I'm going to rock through some Let's of these, go by quick. the way. Uh, yeah. Is Jackal still in the Guinness Book of World Records? 100 shows in 50 days and 21 shows in 24. So you guys still have your two world yeah. records. Awesome. I remember when he did that, and you, he set out to do that. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. I've always heard that it's kind of douchey to wear a band's T-shirt to their concert. I was kind of curious, how many bands can you name that it's okay to actually wear their shirt to their concert? And I have a couple that I can name. Well, we have a ton of people that wear our shirts to our concert. I've always heard that's kind of douchey. Do you think it's douchey? No, we go. We I, I don't. But we, I never have. We go out after the show, and we will go out. Generally, we'll go out and sign shirts after you know sign and take pictures and that kind of thing. So to me, I think yeah. it's okay. I think that's that's okay to wear the t shirt of the band you're seeing. I don't think that's douchey. Yeah, I don't. If you're I don't. I don't. I've never thought of it as douchey. I can tell you this: if it's douchey, I'm guilty because I used to wear my Ted Nugent shirt to see Ted Nugent, <laughs> you know, proud or ACDC or whatever. I was proud of it. So. Damn right. Thanks. And Brian but, Johnson. But, you know, I, that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, ACDC is definitely one of those bands that you should wear your 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 your, your ACDC shirt to see an ACDC show. I wrote Metallica, Stones, Foo Fighters. And Rush, those are all good. good Black choices. Sabbath, those yeah. are yeah. Sabbath, yeah. yeah. You can wear like you can wear the shirt to their show, and and and, and, and uh, you're not a douche. And uh, Lemmy, uh, Motorhead, yeah. yeah. You won't God be the bless. only one. Did you, meet, did you ever meet? Did you ever meet Lemmy? I, I, I've met him one time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I tell you, a funny story was um, I, I was buddies with those guys and, and a guy named Todd Singerman who managed uh, uh, Motorhead and uh, a radio station friends of my Johnny Dare and those guys mm-hmm. in Kansas City had a, a dream. Uh, they always wanted Motorhead to play their Halloween show. 
And so I said, well, I, I'm, I'm buddies with Todd. Let me call, see if I can't make that happen. And I, I called, and he goes, man, they're not doing any American dates on this tour. They're going to be all over in Europe and stuff. And I said, well, this station is very special. They're good friends of mine. How can we work this out for them to come and play their Halloween show? And so he worked with me, and we actually got it done. And so, and, and of course, I, I was excited because ja- Jackal played with Motorhead that night, and, and, and it was at a baseball stadium. They you know put the concert together in. And, uh, but the band, so Lemmy and them show up a couple of days early, and they're rehearsing and uh, just before the show, right? And so they're rehearsing, and the program director goes to visit and introduce himself and thank them for coming to play their show. And he goes down to the rehearsal. And, uh, and part of the deal was that I told Todd Singerman, their manager, I said, if they'll come and play the show, I'll get Bob Edwards to, to spin the single. You know, he'll be he'll spin the, the the single and promote the fact you guys are coming. You're gonna be on the air, let yeah, me. Yeah, so 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 <laughs> you, they're gonna be playing your new single it's off awesome. the record. So so Bob goes back to see the band and Lemmy's sitting there and he's drinking, you know, his liquor and, and you know with his eight ball of, of of crank that he puts in mixed into it. <laughs> it God I, bless I, you. I, I kid you not. I mean he would he would take and mix his crank into the damn into the, the liquor. I mean do was hardcore. What's the bar down from the whiskey <laughs> that he always want, goes the to? Rainbow. The rainbow. The rainbow, yeah. And, and, and so yeah. So Lemmy's back there. They're taking the break. Bob Edwards goes, hey, man, I want to thank you for coming and playing our show. And I just want you to know that we're playing the hell out of your single. And Lemmy goes, oh, yeah, what, what, what song is that? And Bob told him what song it was. He goes, uh, we won't be playing that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy, did, Lemmy didn't know what the single was, and they weren't playing it. Damn. And, but he goes, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, yeah, what song is that? And he told him what song it was. He goes, well, we won't be playing that one. <laughs> That is a great Lemmy story. Is that, that's a great Lemmy story. <laughs> All right. Uh, my last question is always a really random question. Okay. I, I believe that you would agree that humans are the greatest animals on this planet. I mean, we're at the top of the food chain, so I'm just going to... I don't know. So. I'm a, after that video, I shot, I'm a huge fan of fucking turtles. Yeah, well... <laughs> and, turtles, and I'm a huge turtles, fan of yeah. turtles fucking. So. Yeah. I like, I like yeah, lions. If, yeah. I don't yeah. know why I just do. But if you yeah. want to fuck either of them, you just trank them and you do whatever you want. I know that's bestiality. We don't support that on this show. <laughs> no, All right. no if, we don't. Well, if, humans, if humans are the greatest animal on this planet, right. why are we the only ones that wipe our ass? Or... Is it because we wipe our ass that makes us the greatest animals? Jesse, I wish I could help you. That is, that is a damn good question. That's a damn good question because I prefer to wipe it. I don't know. Just, I, I just got to say that by, by the shape of things that I see on the news and the state of humanity that we were talking about earlier, I, I just seriously question that. I'm, I'm losing faith in mankind quickly. I've lost, I've, I've lost so much faith in mankind just by some of the shit I've seen lately, and especially the fact, to be serious, of all these people that are polarized to the left and to the right. I think anybody out there that is hardcore left and hardcore right, I think it, it got their head up their ass because the truth is always in the middle. And if you're following the news and these, these damn politicians down that road, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yeah. You're, you're right about that. You got to find your middle. We all got to find our middle yeah, ground. This, this totally country, agree. This, and this country is in a sad shape about it. And, and, and I'm not, uh, trust me, I leave it to Bruce Springsteen and Bono to write a song that'll cure cancer or to change the world. Jackal's not going to do that. But it, 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 you know, it's in a sad state when I'm bringing it up and saying, <laughs> people get your head out of your ass and quit following people down that left or right road because it's, it's all bullshit. Find the, the middle. The truth brother. is in the middle. Yeah. Damn right. Well, Common it, sense. Raise your kids. Woo! <laughs> Great way to discuss wiping your ass. Find yeah. the middle. <laughs> and I just want to, I just want good. to say that uh, thanks to uh, Brett Barney, my co-host, with his always challenging questions, and uh, Tyler Maynard on air, off air, depends. Uh, but nothing better than this special guest right here. As much as I love this guy and Thank respect you, you, whether I see you once a year or twenty times a year, we always uh, start off where we left off. And uh, Jesse James. Uh, American Outlaw Bourbon Whiskey. Drink it because I know for a fact one drop of sack sweat goes in each one. Shot of, of Outlaw. Yeah, please swing by Total Wine, register to win that guitar. They got Total Wine and Spirits as well as the Sprayberry Bottle Shop. Both of them got it. So Sprayberry uh, in Alpharetta, which is where I'm at right now. Okay. So I'm uh, looking forward to going by there, dude. This is good stuff. And this, I think, is now going to be the sponsor that we have. I think we have two sponsors: we're gonna, Oxygen we're and Jesse James. We're going to work on that. Yeah. Okay. Because we're not going anywhere. Proud to be here on Yeah, Come On. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Come On. Jesse James Dupree of Jackal.